I'll click go live. I don't know if, uh, I think there's probably about 30 or 40 seconds of lag between me and the chat, but uh, it's going to be all right. Uh, hopefully my connection doesn't shut down. I was uh, I was streaming on Discord yesterday for a bit, working on some personal projects, and just my internet kept dying really, really badly. It seems that me and Discord just don't seem to get along anymore. Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm so glad it's without understanding quaternions, yeah. The thing is, right, with inverse kinematics is if you are interested in inverse kinematics, as I decided I was yesterday, I looked up how to do inverse kinematics and I found a bunch of people writing scripts which had stuff like um, like heading if they were doing it in processing or they'd be talking about quaternions and like encoding the quaternions or they would have loops none of which we have conveniently available within Blender. So uh, I found a picture of inverse kinematics and I'm basing all of my understanding of inverse kinematics on that picture. So hopefully this is actually correct because it's largely a guess, but I think, I think it behaves like inverse kinematics. So I'm, I'm going to call it that, right? I think it is inverse kinematics. You kind of like go, anyway, I'll, I'll explain it in a sec, but how's everybody doing? How are you all doing? Is it fabric? I don't even know what that means. What do you mean, Jin? Is that an algorithm or a script or a... I also found a, um, I've sort of given up on being vegetarian. I was, I was learning about how damaging to the environment vegetarian, like, and just general, like, agriculture is. And my whole, like, I don't want to eat meat is because I don't want to eat meat because I don't want to kill animals. But then it's like, if you farming agriculture and you're plowing, plowing the ground, then you're like, that's kind of worse. So it's like the only way for you to do ethically sourced food is to grow it all yourself, which I'm not doing. So, uh, Anyway, there's a local place that does, there's a smokehouse, it's called uh, Lancaster Port Smokehouse, and uh, they do loads of really cool things, like this uh, venison salami, which is pretty neat, but yeah, kind of interesting, off topic. And uh, another thing, actually, I bought a book, um, oh yeah, again, yeah, that is what I'm doing, yeah, forwards and backwards, cool, I guess it's got a name then, oh, I see fabric forwards and backwards reaching inverse kinematics yes that is what i'm doing um yeah i bought this book it's called black oh that shows up so much better on the camera than it does in real life uh, it's called black architecture in monochrome and it's just got some really neat uh architecture it's a tiny little book but it's really thick it's like one of these kind of coffee table ish books and it's just got yeah just like a load of really interesting architecture and sort of quite a lot of modernist stuff all basically black building. So if you're interested in architecture and just generally actually Fiden, uh, that's how you spell it, P-H-A-I-D-O-N. They're a really interesting publishing house. They do loads of little kinds of books. I've got a few of their books actually. Um, here's another one that I just happen to have to hand, Radical Architecture of the Future. So they have just like a lot of these really interesting little Books you can dip into, books for people like me who uh, lose interest super quickly with books. And it's like, I can I can read this amount of text and I can then like know a bit more about a project. It's kind of like a blog in book form with some really beautiful photos. So I dig it. Fiden, have a look at that book. Anyway, let's come into Blender. A toilet book, yeah. <laughs> hey, no, how's it going? Fruit Zeus, am I enjoying my new position at Unity? Yeah, oh my god, it's so much fun. There's just, like, there's so much stuff going on there, so many cool projects. Everybody is incredibly intelligent. Like, I cannot express that enough. Like, everybody is an expert at their trade. And I just, yeah, I feel completely out of my depth with it. But, uh trying to learn. I'm trying to like soak up everybody's know-how. Okay, so 
Inverse kinematics, what is the idea of inverse kinematics? This one does not have poles. We will actually be adding poles to our in inverse kinematics. Um, which is like one of those things that you're supposed to do with quaternions and I'm just, um, we're just going to do it with cross product. So I hope that works all the time because it seemed to work. Uh, but the idea of inverse kinematics is you have something that the legs are like pointing towards. Um, oops. Uh, and you have like the start, basically the start and the end, right? It's kind of like having the hand um, and the hand will reach towards a thing, um, but it can't detach from the shoulder. So if you have this squishing down, you see when it gets too far away, the legs are basically just straight or the tentacles or whatever. Um, and also like when we get to it a little bit later on, I'm going to be showing you how to do the, like the shader stuff with this marching cubes because all of these like blending textures and things getting these little balloon guys going it's pretty fun um now i'm trying to work out how true shade generation works oh do you want to just do that quickly the idea of true shade tiling is that you have a repeatable tile and you rotate it randomly generally 90 degrees but there's a few you can do like six uh like he a hexagonal Trichet tiling, something like that. Um, so a pretty, uh, and you can have different tiles as well, right? Um, the main thing is that you have them like coming into the tiles at the same point. So each tile either has like a termination or a through or a corner, right? So every tile can be generated. Um, It's probably easier if I just model a couple actually and then we instance them. Um, shift DX. So I'm just going to do a cross in each one just so I've got my lines and everything done. And I'm also going to just select these edges and bevel them all just so I've got the same size paths as well. And in a couple of these, I might just. This one can just terminate all of them. This one can maybe be a crossroads and this one can be a through road. Hey, Sean, how's it going? Uh, crossroads. And this one's going to terminate everything. Like that. And then basically you just take that collection of planes or, you know, if you've generated them, then did I keep that? Yes. And then you can instance them on a grid, right? So just, I'm going to use my grid because I've got spacing on it, but you just use whatever grid you want. So Z1, spacing a two by two, and we can instance on points the collection, in this case, hidden, pick collection, reset children, separate children. And that's kind of the idea, right? Set this to random. Uh, random rotation should be uh, random around the z-axis, but it should be stepped as well. So let's grab a combine x, y, z. Oh god, the RGB nodes. Combine x, y, z. And uh, hey, Alex, how's it going? Alex is probably a better person to ask about truchet tiling. You've done some insane truchet tiling. And uh, this is going to be snapped. Uh, actually, I could do it with an integer random value, just like this then multiply it by pi by 2, which is 90 degrees. And this, this becomes our Z rotation. And then there you go. It's somewhat true shade tiling. Uh, can I explain how I made the menu for my notes? I did not make the menu for my notes. I paid a developer. Uh, have a look at, I mean, you can have a look at the source code for it. You can also have a look at the source code for the node presets add-on which is a default add-on with Blender by Campbell Barton. Uh, that's how I made my first iteration. Um, and if you want to know how mine was made explicitly, then maybe join my Discord server and have a look at... Uh, there's a few people, actually. I mean, Node++ is probably another one that is worth looking at because that's kind of... A, I think it has, like, some more tools behind behind it. Um, but, yeah, Jay Yoshi on Discord, he is my developer, so always direct questions that way 
All right, let's get into this. Don't save. Let's make a new file here. Um, I've got a simplified version of this that has a pole. Um, so this is just like a one, two, three, right? Unfortunately, there's no real way for us to get this working super nicely with like procedural steps and being able to be like, okay, well, I want 10 or I want to like my first one I set up to be able to do up to 10 and have it somewhat procedural. Today, we're just going to do it with a fixed count, probably three, because it's kind of spidery and fun. Um, and we're basically doing the start and the end. So it attaches to the start points towards the end. And it has this pole as well, which isn't perfect because we have some issues <laughs> in this 45 degrees, but the rest of the time it points towards it. I think this is like the problem with not using quaternions. I think that's basically why you use quaternions so you don't get weird gimbal lock and glitching and stuff. All right. Let me, uh, I'm going to keep this on the side just because I don't want to, I feel like this was kind of difficult for me to work out how to do this. Um, so I'm going to keep something just so that I have a reference in case I forget what's going on, which is not unlikely. Let's make sure we're saving. And let's make a new node tree, call it in first kinematics ik okay. and i'm going to pin this because we're going to be using empties and things i don't ever want to be clicking off here and i'm also going to get rid of the spreadsheet because it's not very useful oh also maybe i should use 3.1 because this is not working correctly yeah maybe close enough okay Everything that we're doing in today's session as well kind of is agnostic to Blender version. We're not doing anything special, I think. You will need the field index node, but I think that's the only relatively special one we've got. Um, so here's the idea, right? You've got a point that you're aiming towards. I'm going to call this one the end. And we've got a point that we're starting at. And we have a bunch of segments. Uh, I'm going to do three segments. And three segments is four vertices, right? Start and then at the end of each one. For me to get this to point at this empty when it's here, it's basically just a straight line. So that's pretty straightforward. Uh, however, what happens when the empty is closer? Well, in this case, what we do is we can basically take our end point and position it on the empty because that's it wants to be. That's where it wants to be. Um, and then we need to basically take a line to the next point, right? So we're just going to take that vector straight through there. And we're going to multiply this vector, this normalized vector, by the length of a segment. And that's going to basically tell us where the next point can be. So this point can't be here because the segment's too short. So we need to move this point down to around about here. OK, so that's our next point. And then we can do the same, right? So this one now goes up through here. And this is obviously further, so the point actually has to be around about here and then about the same right so then it's coming forwards but now we've moved this off our start point so now we need to do the same thing in reverse or forwards so we basically do the same we put this one back to the beginning find where this is going to come to about here find where this one's going to come to about here find where this one's going to come to about here and basically you just go back and forwards a few times it's not too bad um yo oswin new pc an i9 12900K, 64 gig of RAM, and an RTX 3090. Good lord. That is a beast. It's going to keep you going for a few years. So, rather than using Treg for all of this and having to find angles and stuff, we're just going to use subtraction and normalize and scale and that's basically going to be it so let's just start with that hey carl how's it going uh we need a mesh line this is going to generate our points and just so that i can visualize what's going on with making it look you know 
visible rather than just being a 2D line there or 1D line. We can just instance on points a couple of icospheres. I'm going to make these little, maybe a bit bigger. And I'm going to, actually that's pretty fine, it's just for demonstration, isn't it? And then I'm also going to do a thickness. I'm just going to use the ETK pipes for that, but it's basically mesh to curve, curve to mesh. And I can join that together. 0.05, there we go. Now we've got all of our knuckles and the, uh, the actual sticks. Cool. Just knuckle that viz, and I'm going to stick it at the end. So we don't want all of these points, and we need to be able to set a bunch of things. I'm also going to add uh, three empties because we need our start, end, and pole. And to begin with, we're going to basically work out the algorithm for making like one, one leg, uh, which is a bit simpler than when we want to do it like procedurally when it's like, okay, well, I want a hundred legs now or 500 or a thousand, which we're going to be able to do, but it does require a little bit of like refactoring, but I figured it's probably best just to show you the first relatively simple one. So we've got our start empty, our end empty and our pole empty in here. Let's make sure they're visualizing their names. And I'm going to also put them into a collection called targets. Pull these into the node tree and I'm also going to name the nodes so that I can collapse them. I wish that was like an, a default thing, like the object info node, if it gets collapsed, it should become called whatever object is in it. And the same for the math nodes, like if it's add 0.5, it should just collapse to add 0.5. So annoying. It's just the little things. Uh, pole, hide that one. And this one's going to be the start. And hide that one. All right. So we're going to walk up and down until we've got our thing. And it's like an estimation of IK. I'm sure there's probably a better, like more official method that I'm sure real software uses, but just this way in the node tree, I feel like this might be a relatively simple, relatively performant way of doing it. Uh, we need a few additional controls as well, actually. We need the segment count. So I'll just throw an integer on here, which can be our segments. And actually, if I say three segments, then we've actually got three vertices. So I need to do that plus one. There we go. Uh, I don't, I might, mm, yeah, no, I'm just going to keep it like that. Uh, and we also want a value node for the segment length. So we'll stick in here. There we go, segment length. And to make sure this is a nice convenient data block, I'm just going to frame this. Sorry, not frame it, group it. Uh, I don't actually need either of these as their own nodes. I can just do that on the group output. That's fine. I like using data blocks just to like move stuff around and have a few nodes that output the same thing. Uh, but everything needs to be inside the node for it to work that way. So this is segments, this is segment length, once again. And then we've got our start position, end position, and pole position. Which we're using the locations there. Cool. I'm going to call this one controls. And there we have it, right. This should be three, and a segment can be, um, let's just start with a length of one, that should be fine. Uh, it's always good as well just to make sure that you're starting your segments on the start point, just to make sure that your approximation is going to begin in like the correct, because right, if, if I do this right now, it's going to basically say, okay, well, if I take this one, put it at the end point, and then we're going to calculate it to here, and then to here, and then this one's going to go to here, but 
when we go back forwards, what we do is we take this one and we put it on the start point. So now it's going to go up here. So that first step was actually not just useless, but anti-useful. So we're also just going to take a transform node and put this on the start position like that. And now we're good to go, right? I'm going to grab my controls, bring them forwards, all the data blocks. So it's all going to be the same outputs from these. Now this is where things get a little bit more confusing for me. So you'll have to forgive me if I forget what I'm doing for a moment. Uh, I'm going to grab a set position and we're going to go backwards and then forwards as we go here. Um, I need, this is why it's not fully, fully procedural because I basically need to set which, but which, um, which thing gets which vertex, sorry, which, yeah, which point, which index gets which point. So to do this, I'm going to use a switch node. In fact, I'm going to use three switch nodes because I've got four points on here. So I've got zero, one, two, three, which is all four of them. I'm going to put this into a group as well. So it's just basically making a bunch of tools for us to work with here. So this is going to be our position like that. And then we've got zero, one, two and three important you put these in the right order and you number them always useful and then our switch as well we're going to have the index come in from the outside i think i'm just going to hide these like so the way i did last time yes definitely so i want the index to come in from the outside so let's make another integer here uh, index. I'm going to call this a vector switch. If you have my node pack, uh, there actually is a vector switch. Sorry, switch vector, which basically is exactly the same, but just has more points. There we go. Uh, is there a performance difference between transform and set position? There is. Yes. Uh, the set position works on individual vertices and the transform works on essentially like the whole mesh block. Uh, if I was to add a really high resolution icosphere, you might notice a difference. If I set this up to seven and then I transform. Are you serious? Maybe I, do I need to? <laughs> Damn it, I hate it when Blender works fast. Maybe. Okay, so the transform node is around about a millisecond. Set position node ought to be slower because it's, I mean, it's looking faster here. I was told basically by the devs that uh, set position is less performant because it's working on a per vertex basis rather than transform, which is like considering the whole block as one. Maybe it's just more en uh, memory efficient remember anyway so we've got our vector switch and to switch between them we need to switch between factors uh, by index right so we're just going to count up the chain here so inputs index um, let's go in there and then we just need to switch them so index 0 to 1 will switch the first one now to make the switch work on the second one you can simply subtract 1 so now it's going to be like one to two is going to become zero and one, which is our off and on. And then you can just stack another one. And there you go. Perfect. So that's, that's our first step, our first tool on here. Just looks like this. And that's our vector switch. So the vector switch basically allows us to take a position, uh, for example, um, so to be, the first one we're going to be doing is working backwards. So we're going to be working from the far end down the line back towards us. Um, and just to make this like more relevant to what we're doing later, I'm also going to just subtract, am I? Maybe I don't need to. Yeah, let's do it. So we're going to just say that we're working top to bottom, right? Each time what I'm saying will become more relevant the further we work through here. So let's change this to subtract. Uh, if you take 
a, if you take, so we've got indices 0, 1, 2, and 3. I need to make this the other way around, so like 3, 2, 1, and 0. If I just take the total number of segments, which is 3, and subtract it, subtract from it the index, then I get 3 minus 0 is 3. Uh, 3 minus 1 is 2. 3 minus 2 is 1. 3 minus 3 is 0. So you can just do this, right? Segments subtract the index, and that basically inverts this uh, pecking order for our vector switch. Next thing we need to do is we basically, well, the first thing is we can take our endpoint, and uh, this is going to be into the end, right? Because our first, the, the first thing that you do, if these are your points, and this is your start point, and this is your end point here, is you take your end point and you put it on that end position. Now I need to take this end point and I need to subtract from it. Or do I? Do I subtract it from? Yeah, I subtract it from the vector at the next position. And to get that, we can use the field at index node. Field at index. This needs to be a vector. Currently taking the position, which I'll just position over there because it's like an input. Um, and the index is uh, three, two, two, because it's the uh, it's the second from the end. So this one's three, two, one, zero, right? So we're interested in index two, the position of this. I'm going to, with a vector math node, I'm going to subtract from this the previous position, which for our first point is actually just the end point. Let me stack this here. And this basically gives us uh, this vector. Well, actually, it, we get it from one to the other. We now need to make sure that we're working at the correct size. So we're going to normalize this to make sure that it's just a full like one meter long vector. And that's going to allow us to scale it to the segment length. So grab another one of these, scale to the segment length. And now we've got the proper vector. We just need to add to it the original like previous point so that it goes back to here. Um, anybody here know if you can sh pass data between two separate geometry nodes? Uh, as long as they're on the same mesh, you can pass data. If they're not, if it's just like separate trees, you can use drivers, like right-click, copy as new driver, right-click, paste new driver, something like that. Uh, let's now just add the previous point here, which is our endpoint. And in theory, this should be this one. And there we go. So once again, I'm going to put all of this into a group because this is like a step, right? If I go control G and I need to make a few things on here like this. Um, so our top input that comes to the field at index. Oh, we've got two things coming out. Um, yes, this should go straight to that. We don't need the end to come out of this one. We just need its own position to come out. So I'm going to, the output is going to be called the position. The inputs on this one, we've got the, uh, which is like the current position, uh, current position. We've got the previous position or like the previous, I'm going to call it the previous position, but it's like the, the, uh, the next vertex in the chain, right? Previous vert, maybe let's go with that trying to make it as descriptive as possible. The scale is the segment length. And this final one is the index, which is correct. That's all we're interested in for that one. Cool. So hopefully this is making a little bit of sense. Basically taking each one, shoot a vector over to it, normalize it so it's the correct length, like just has a zero to one range. So normalizing basically makes a vector have a length of one. That's what it does, it scales it. 
uh, and then after that we can scale that vector because it's now one we can scale it to whatever we want with our segment length add that back to our original position and that basically sets our offset back from like a zero to whatever it is shunts it back to where we want over here and now we can position our vector as needed so i'm going to call this one step and then what we can do is um we take another one of these, the current position, oh, let me get rid of those inputs because they're really annoying. Hide value, hide value, hide value. I'm going to keep the index out. Uh, that should be fine. I might put the current position down to the bottom there. So the previous vert is just the one that was above it. So you can just bring this down. If you have a longer chain, it's just going to be bringing more down. Uh, segment length obviously comes from the same segment length. This one is um, index one, three, two. So now we're interested in this one, right? So we're interested in the position that this one is currently at, which is that position. Uh, so what's happened is it's taken wherever this one is, drawn a line through it, scaled it to a length of one, multiplied that by the distance, and then retransitioned this back from zero up to that position. So if I plug this one in, we've got the next one up here already. Who knew inverse kinematics was so easy? We're basically finished. The next thing is to work out where we want to put this last one. Now the last one basically should, like by rights, I should do this again with an index of zero, connect it all up correctly, segment length, uh, current position, and there we go, right, that's sort of correct. And it is correct, right? This is now working inverse kinematics, but it's back to front. Um, it's so weird. Uh, but because the next step is gonna be going forwards, we're basically gonna be taking that start point and putting it on the start. So no matter how long you have, I would recommend just take your final one and you might as well just plug that into the start point directly because the next step as we go back forwards when we go back forwards, we will use all three, but when we're going backwards, there's no point in doing that third computation because it doesn't change the calculation because we're ultimately just going to put it on the start. So you, you, you just do that. Um, let me straighten out these noodles a little bit here. Just so that we can actually have some hope of reading it. Uh, this one, I guess, should go down to the bottom maybe. Obviously, I will make this file available once the stream is done. I know this is kind of potentially confusing as you go through here. Um, i do that like that. Um, and actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to put all of this into another node group. So this is my backwards step. And then there's after this, there's going to be a forward step. So it just makes our lives a little bit easier here. So let me just do this. Should I put stuff? In a sensible position. Um, I'm going to grab all of these. Control G. Let's rename this one to backwards. Save. And uh, I basically need to make sure. Um, well, let's let's get all of our inputs named first. So we've got our segment length. Got our segment count. Oh yeah, that bottom value. So that value should actually be an integer called segments. Let's put that one back up to the top. The segment length is there. And then we've got our, let's do start, end, pole, which ones are these connected to? So three is our start. End is the previous vert. Current position. I'm just going to rename that one to the position. Output is position. I'm also going to add another one here for the pole. We're not going to use it in the backward step, but we will use it in the forward step. And you're going to see why in just a moment. Uh, and I'm also going to bring all of these forwards 
as well and just I'm going to plug them into the output so that we've got something which is a bit more loopable just like this obviously not that position because we're calculating that through now we'll just move that to the bottom there we go awesome this is all going to plan let me hide make sure these are all hidden and there we go all right backward step done now we just need to do a forward step Oh, I've only been going 35 minutes. Damn, this is going to be a short stream. Uh, let's make a new one of these. This one's going to be forwards. And let's just join all of these up. They're all named the same, so they will join correctly with Node Wrangler. Uh, let's join up our positions here. And yeah, just make sure you've made a new data block if you're carrying, if you're if you're following along here. Oh, I'm also going to just plug in my pole. Here just so that it makes it through to the Ford collection. Uh, here we go. So in Fords, what's different? Well, the first thing that's different is that we are starting off with the start position. So let's just join that one up to begin with. Um, our segments don't need to be, we don't need this subtract, we don't need it to be inverted here. We can just use the index directly. That's the first thing. Our steps can actually go in ascending order this time. So let's go one and then two. And also our final step here, once properly calculating, because we're going like away from our thing. Uh, so let's grab previous vote. It goes in like that. We've got our segment length. This one's going to be index number three. Current position comes from this position. And this position goes up to three. And there we go. So this is not working perfectly. So let's start debugging. Uh, do I know of any resources for young students to begin learning the basics of geometry nodes? There's a really good course by, I think, Crossmind Studio. So I just searched Crossmind Studio um, and Tagma has also just launched a new Geometry Nodes course on their Patreon. And Talgma are excellent, so I definitely recommend them. If you have, I mean, I've got a few YouTube videos on it. So if you if you want some free resources, then that's also available. Uh, let me just check what I've done differently here. No, one, two, three, that's correct. Um, that just goes to the polar line. That just goes to the polar line. Hey, Blue Jay, how's it going? That should be those. So that position joins up correctly. Sorry, I'm just cross-referencing against my other file here just to make sure that I'm not uh, wasting people's time. That's another one for the polar line. Oh, the two young students can... How, how young are you meaning? Are you talking like grade school? Um, or just like university? Oh yeah, Brett. Looks like a fixie. I was never that good at fixie tricks. I was so bad. I could ride backwards and I can track stand, but that's about it. Um, so... We've got three coming out of our segment length, correct. One coming out of our start. Two, 
two coming out there still, aren't we? Yes, correct. Oh, ages 10 and 11, interesting. Do you, there's probably, um, yeah, maybe the onus is on you then to explain it. <laughs> the, uh, I mean, a node is basically like a container for a procedure. So that can be like add, that is a node, or subtract. They're like really simple like procedures, right? Um, and you can maybe demonstrate showing like how to do some basic arithmetic in node form, like one plus five times 10, and your order of operation is important and it's gonna go through the, the, the nodes and it's kind of like a factory goes through one processing machine into the next processing machine and it's like a conveyor belt and out comes the hopefully correct answer at the other end. So I guess stuff like that and like understanding the data flow along the noodles and that there's uh, the sort of the continuity of data and understanding that, uh, yeah, I guess maybe like the understanding that the data is actually like going through them might be might be useful. I mean, I've learned all of my maths through Blender, through Nodes, so I think it's a really useful platform for learning. And I would definitely, if you're thinking of teaching your uh, kids or whoever uh, through Nodes, I think that's like an excellent way of getting them to engage with stuff in a way that maybe adults uh, could use more. <laughs> yeah, true, true, true. Okay, so why isn't this working? Let's have a little think about what we're doing here. I mean, it's not... Wait, why did I think it wasn't working? Maybe it's just because it's not accurate. I mean, it's basically... So, okay, so it is working. I don't know why I was debugging that so long. Um, should end be connected to something? Not in this one, actually, no. Because we, we don't actually need the end other than to work towards it. Um, but it's like the towards it is based on the previous step right the backward step something i found yesterday as well i've always told people if in if possible you should stack fields because they're more performant um but when i was doing this yesterday let me see if i can get a few more in here so that's three steps, right? Backwards and forwards, that's one step. Uh, so that's that's three steps if I make six. This had like a crazy slowdown when I was doing it with 10, 10 segments. Uh, let's grab our position as well here. Oh yeah, here we go, perfect, perfect. So this is six steps and it's apparently taking one and a half seconds. And you can see if I move this around, Oh god, if it eventually moves. While it is accurate, it is painfully slow. However, if instead of looping these, what I do is take a supposition node. And because these are fields, you can plug them in multiple places. So if I take this and I go one, two, three, wait, what's that? That's five, <laughs> six. Let me uh, just come to this one, there we go. And I join this up each time, hopefully from position. I'm calling it position so that Node Wrangler knows what to connect as well in here. Strangely, it's the same amount of computation, right, theoretically, as these X, but it's only taking 1.2 milliseconds instead of one and a half seconds. So. I'm, just, I'm guessing it's something to do with the field at index node. But the fastest way by far is to basically stack um, set position nodes instead. I don't know if maybe they've been refactored or something like that. But yeah, now we have inverse kinematics. Woo! Great. Uh, but we're not following the pole. Right, if I just Alt G on that, Alt G, G, X, or oh, maybe less far. So just so that I've got like a 2D representation that I can work with here. We want to follow the pole. And we don't want to do 
complex maths. I mean, we're going to do some complex maths, but it's not going to be like, it's not going to be insanely complex. Um, I don't also know if this is the correct method. I tried really hard to watch a tutorial. I'm really bad at watching tutorials. I'm also really bad at quaternions because I don't really understand them. So as soon as they started throwing around, like type in this con command and do this with the quaternions, I was just like, I was out. However, I drew a picture and I think we can work it out from that. So the important thing to remember is that you only need your poles on the middle two, or basically just not the ends, however many you have, you just don't need it on the ends. Because the first one is the shoulder or whatever it's attached to and the end one wants to be attached to whatever it is it's grabbing or if it's a full extension it basically wants to be a straight line so that's fun only needs to be done twice and so don't do any more computation than you need to uh, what we need to do and <laughs> now there's some joy in proceduralism yeah to be fair last week was um a bit of a chore <laughs> going through those convicts for hours right let me try and uh, let me try and demonstrate what's going on here I've got my start and my end s and e I've got my pole up here and we've got something which joins them like this with four vertices but we're only interested in the middle hey folk how's it going so if we have this, what I basically need to make sure is that uh, that this angle, I mean, this could basically be like anywhere within a circle, right? And still have the correct segment length, at least on this side. Uh, and if, if it was over here, then that would, you know, that would potentially be fine. And the next one could be over here and whatever. And that's all still a perfectly like correct solve. So if you're moving this around, you may find that you get some weird like glitching and stuff just kind of tweaking and uh, you definitely saw that on um, with a jellyfish when it, its tentacles were like popping up through its head and just going crazy. So we don't want that to happen. We want to have some control over which direction the knee is pushing. So that's why we use the poles, right? So what we're going to do basically I say basically, what what we're going to do is we're going to take this vector from the start to the end and we're going to take the vector from, maybe I've drawn this in a bad way, let's put this one over here, uh, we're going to take the vector from the start to our first vector or to whichever vector um, and we have the vectors right there, this noodle, this is the, this is the position of this vector. And we're also going to take the position from the, the vector from the start to the position of the pole. And what we can do is we can use the cross product. And what the cross product does is it compares two vectors. Basically, you've got one vector pointing over here, one vector pointing over here. And if you pretend that this is now actually just a triangle plane, the normal direction of this plane, like 90 degrees off the surface, like this, that is what the cross product of this these two vectors is going to produce. So what I can do is I can take the cross product between the start end and start pole, and that's going to give me some vector. Uh, I'm going to call this one SP or whatever. Uh, then we've got the SV one, which is going to be between the start end and the start vector. So this is now another um, another cross product, and that's going to go over here. But we can guarantee that these are 90 degrees from start end they're both they both should be i think because they're both basically revolving around that plane so they should <laughs> fingers crossed my maths is not like incredible but i think this is correct and basically what this means is that we can say what's the vector here what's the angle here and then we can rotate uh this to actually what's the cross product of two collinear vectors what does collinear mean like opposite direction the same direction this is how bad i am at maths let me google this uh two corresponding parts having the same linear order mm -mm, that doesn't feel right The 
points A, B, and C lie on the same line, they are collinear. Oh, I see, right, yeah. Two points basically in a straight line. Yeah, parallel. Um, well, if they're the same angle, do you want to find out? Uh, let's use our trusty, almost never used spreadsheet. Viewer node. Uh, let's grab a vector math node. And we'll do a cross product. Oh, this, let's make that a vector. Looks like it's zero. Definitely seems to be zero. So I guess zero. Uh, yeah, Riaz, I'm doing fabric apparently. I literally didn't even know this was a thing, but it's, uh, it's all good. Right, so in the forward version, basically what we would need to do therefore is rotate by a certain angle, which means we need to know how to rotate this point around this axis. Well, we have this axis. This axis is end, subtract, start. And the center for our rotation is just the start. The vector is the vector we're wanting to rotate and the angle is the dot product between these two vectors or maybe the arc cosine of the dot product. I think that's correct. All right. So what we're interested in is a vector, vector rotate. Uh, we're rotating this around a certain axis. Uh, let me just put this into a group to begin with, just so that we're clearing the air a little bit here. So output is our position. Input is our position. Um, and what else do we need to come in? We need the start point, the end point, the pole point, and I think that's it, actually, just to start the end of the pole. So start, end, pole. Yeah, Riaz, I've already done it, it's all good. I mean, I've done it before, I did a practice run before. Um, hide value. Yeah, I just, I had to do a test run because last week was no test run and no test run apparently just means like eight hours of me reading out binary. Nobody likes that. So let's call this one polar line. Got our position coming through. We've got our uh, start point coming through, our end points coming through, and our pole points coming through. Now I'm only going to be doing this in the forward step because it doesn't really make sense to do it on the backward step. Uh, wouldn't change anything. It would just be added computation. Uh, I can shift D that down just so that I've got it again. So I'm coming in the next step, splicing it in here, just again in those middle two. And all we need to do is do our maths to work out these different vectors, right? So we need a vector math node. Let's do a subtraction. Um, to work out the, sub the distance, the to work out the position to this end point from the start point, you do end subtract start, just like this. And then we also need end, uh, no wait, we need pole subtract start. That's gonna give us the start to the pole. And then I also need the, maybe I only need one more of these. Um, we need the position, the current position, also subtract the start. That's going to be the distance to that one. Now then I can do the cross product of these. So cross product, pew, pew, like this. Same down here um, between, wait, which was that? That was cross product between the start and, and yeah, start position. And then this one is going to be between start end and start pole. So this should give us uh, these two factors, right, that we can now compare down here. Now we're going to normalize these just to make sure that they go into our cross into our dot product properly. Like this, just make sure the correct size because otherwise the size is going to be messing it up basically how far away the pole is. And we don't want that to happen. Then we can come in here, grab the dot product and the dot product 
in my head basically just compares the similarity of two vectors. So the less similar they are, or the, the more similar they are, the lower this angle is ultimately going to be. And we can just use the arc cosine in here as the angle. Okay. And then the center is the start position. The axis is the start position subtract, or the end position subtract the start position. And then this is inverted, so we just need to do something to basically flip it. Oh, we are getting some good stuff in the middle there. I do like that. Man, there's just something on with this. Um... Oh, there we go, start uh, subtract position, I guess. Just something up with the... Uh... Oh, that little bit of maths in there. But I think it's probably more or less fine. It mostly points the correct direction. It's just like one little glitch. But now it means that we can point always our transform towards our pole empty. Hey. Cool. That was easy. Um, oh, Falk, while you're here, if you are still here, uh, there's something weird that happens in geometry nodes. I know you're not like responsible for this, but I figured I should tell you that um, Wait, let me try and get out of here. Um, doing this with like multiple set positions is like a thousand times faster than doing this like this instead, right? Like literally a thousand times faster. It was 1.4 seconds versus 1.3 milliseconds. So just way different for stacking fields instead of stacking the geometry nodes. And I always thought the stack in the geometry nodes was supposed to be slow, but uh, but there we go. Anyway, this is basically it for inverse kinematics, as long as you're making one of them. However, what happens if you want to make a thousand of them? Like, just have a spider with unlimited legs? Well, you're going to need something that plays a bit nicer with your indices. In this case, we're also going to do basically everything has the same segment length. Every leg has the same number of segments. That's my two rules for making this less of a hideous process. So there's a little bit of a limitation there. Um, Beheaded Kamikaze, would it be correct to say that it rotates the first position to be on the plane formed by the pole start end? Um, potentially. Um, I think, oh, as well, Falk, the, um, I'm using the field index node, which I don't know if that's like properly optimized yet. But yeah, it was just uh, it was something that's... I sort of noticed while I was doing it. Yeah, that might be like the multi-threading thing. Um, yeah, beheaded kamikaze, I'm not really sure. I can't, I find it really difficult to visualize these vector math nodes. I just kind of throw them together until stuff works. Okay, so let me just grab this. Okay, I'm gonna call this one single IK. So if you want this file and you're grabbing it later, um, so if you think of a triangle face between start, end, and pole. Oh yeah, so basically you've got this, which can be anywhere on here, but you need to make sure that it's basically on that triangle, wherever this circle intersects this triangle, right? That's what you're saying. Um, yes, that's basically what we're trying to do. Nice. Thanks for explaining that. That helps me understand quite a lot as well. Let me rename this one to plus one. And let's control H on the controls. I think, has anybody else had issues with Blender in the last two days with like being able to click on stuff? Like I'm clicking on this backward node. Sometimes it's just like not picking up clicks or like not picking up tweaks. You see that? Like sometimes it works great. So, Grr, so annoying. 
<laughs> yeah. Uh, am I using named attributes? You saw they landed and basically nobody cared. Yes, I'm using them. I'm actually, I've got so many things on at the moment, which I'm like, oh, I could really use named attributes for this. Um, it's, oh, what? they should have been called get and set. I'm sorry. I know they, there's a reason for them to be called store named attribute and named attribute. What They should have just been called get named attribute or get attribute and set attribute. So that it was, it's just like one of those things where it's like, was there really a need to go in a different direction there? You have the issue with the nodes too. Oh, I'm glad it's so frustrating. Um, right, this is small. I'm gonna put this onto a group. Single IK, there we go. Oh, the drag event got refactored. Interesting. Is it worth reporting as a bug or is that something that will just come out in the wash naturally? Because it's quite frustrating. It's literally like 50% of my clicks don't register. And this one's going to be called multi. Multi IK. <laughs> yeah, 3.2. There was a thing, there was a thing called, um, uh, let me make a note to report that as a book. Um, or maybe I should do it now so people actually, if you've never reported a bug before, it's super easy. Um, what we're going to do, oh, I was going to say I should report my, record my screen, but I'm already using OBS. What you do is you go up to help and then you click report a bug. Your web browser then opens and it should be on your report a bug page and it's already filled in all of your system information it's already submitted in your blender version and now you, what you want to do is do a short description of the error um what was it the tweak event is that what you said oh drag event um so just give like a basic description of what is going wrong, like what you're noticing. If you can do screenshots, that's good. If you can do a quick screen capture, that's good. Make sure it's below six megabytes or it won't upload. I think that's correct. If it's specific to a certain file and you have this enormous like network of nodes, try and make a new file that simplifies it down to basically be like a cube and you do this one node to it and then you just make it show the thing and you can upload that file. Um, in this case, because it's basically a UI error, uh, but it is node-based, so um, we'll see. Anyway, um, oh wait, Eric, worked should be filled in with the latest version. Oh yeah, that's true. Um, I'm not sure which one it worked on, but I do have 3.1, I think. It's difficult for if you use the daily builds and it's like I don't actually remember which daily build it was let's just check in 3.1 yes Falk thank you <laughs> trying to think on the stream is like I swear I'm at 20% um, short description of the error could be something like this uh, let's check that it works as intended over in this one let's just add a bunch of nodes it was groups before so that's why i'm using groups now i mean these all seem to like you click you drag it moves it does the thing i'm gonna say this works oh it's fine to write and build from a few days ago i'm i'm not sure when it started working i feel like i noticed it i've not been on daily builds religiously this week but i feel like it was like around the 12th or 13th. Um, so I'm going to write definitely 3.1. I think the error, I think I noticed the error only in the last three or four days. There we go, hopefully that's useful. And then you can do the exact steps for others to reproduce. So I'm going to say add a new node tree. Add several nodes. Click and drag on different 
nodes that are generally seems to only happen on nodes which are not currently active. And that's probably enough. Um, I will also say the, the behavior that I expect to happen, uh, sometimes the click will not, oh, sometimes, yeah, sometimes the click won't activate the node, drag the node. Um, I wonder if I can just actually open a new, it would be good if I could just do a quick screencast of this. So let me open a new OBS and see if we get any complaints here. Let's launch anyway, because I'm streaming on one. Let's try and record on the other. It appears that we can. And you know, it's always just useful anyway to have a bit of a reference here. So not in this one, don't save. Uh, let's hope I didn't just close that one. Oh yeah, we're good, we're good. See if I can even get this to happen now. I'll start recording. There we go. And that's enough. Exit. Uh, where were we? Up in here. Let me throw in that video. MKVs is fine, aren't they? This one, three and a half meg, that's fine. Yeah, the auto fill in stuff makes it so much use more useful. I've tried reporting bugs on other stuff like Critter. I think maybe Critter actually adopted Blender's version now. Oh, like the, the method for uploading stuff, um, uploading bugs. But there's a few other things as well that it's just been like, oh, fill in all of this information about your computer and, and all of the information about the current version you're using. Um, don't stress when you do an upload about your pictures and just any media, any files being like this, like F and then a bunch of numbers. If you scroll down, you'll see that there. MKV, maybe I should do it as a MP4. By the way, OBS has an automatic, not automatic, but has an inbuilt remuxer. If you want to just remux stuff real easy. So I'm going to just literally just remove that. That should be fine come back to my files here this one drag it in seems to work fine when you click and drag from an empty space inside the node okay let me just before I submit that I will check that Interesting. It's so hard to know, like, where's the padding? I guess that's what's running, what we're running into here is it's like clicking on the label. Please read TTs. Uh, oh, you should specify if geometry nodes or shader nodes. Interesting, I should do. And I should also check if it's geometry nodes only or shader nodes only. Let me throw in a new material. Let me throw in a couple of textures. Does seem to be just just geometry nodes. There we go. So there we go. Now I can I'll give it a title. Um, click, drag. Oh wait, let me register when clicking over a node over a socket label. Um, specifically on sockets. There we go. Labels does not register. There we go. Cool. Create new task. And you can see this is loaded. It's loaded the video as well. Uh, with my enormous cursor. And 
nothing's been assigned to anyone at the moment. I always go in afterwards and edit. Don't assign it to a specific person, but I'm going to tag it geometry nodes. I think that's the correct thing to do. I hope. Uh, I'm tagging it geometry nodes because it is specifically geometry nodes. Oh, I should probably also mention that. Um, in geo nodes doesn't seem to happen in shaders. There we go. <laughs> assign it to ton. Um, save changes. There we go. Cool. So there we go. Now you all know how to assign a, uh, how to write a bug report. Super easy. You just go up to help and then you click report a bug and then you're done. It's basically, it fills it in for you. Geonodes. Right, here we go. I'm actually going to start from scratch this time. Um, with doing our multi thing, I'm not just going to dock to the, the one that we've made. We might pull a few bits like the steps and things, but in general, a lot of it is going to be remade because there's a bunch more maths we need to add to control the indices. In fact, let me make sure I've got a reference open here as well. Just because there's a little bit of thinking. Okay. So to start off with, I'm going to add a plane. I'm going to do it all in geometry nodes because we're going to be using SDFs to actually do our modeling. So let's make a new geometry nodes here. Let's call this one multi IK. Pin it so that we can work with our empties and things. And we're going to bring in, um, we're going to bring in one empty and it's going to be called head because this is going to be the head of our little creature. Um, cool up a little bit. I don't need to do anything with this. We're going to get rid of that input. And we're going to pull in our head here. Let's call this relative. Actually, I think that's something I forgot to do on my other one, just in case people do use it or do look at it. Uh, let's just rename the plane to be single IK. And in my controls group in here, I think I did. Yeah, I forgot to make any of these. relative. So that would basically mean if you were to move the original object, it would offset everything. Uh, but now with these all being relative, in fact, if I can show you, so if I press G now that all moves, but if I had this set to relative, nothing happens because it's based on the, like the, it's basically just setting the, the world position, if you will. Cool. Save multi IK. Okay, let's go. So first things first, let's grab an object. I'm going to grab an icosphere. Oh, inverse kinematics. So inverse kinematics basically allows you to take something which is stuck on something like a shoulder um, and it will reach towards your end point and it will push back. Like it will allow you to basically grab stuff. We've also got it working towards a pole <laughs> with some slight strangeness, um, but you can see Basically, it will reach towards your endpoint, uh, but it won't disconnect. Won't disconnect. And I'm so forward, kin forward kinematics is where you would like set a rotation per point, and it's like okay, you're gonna rotate your upper arm, and then your forearm, and then your hand arm, your hand bone. That's what I meant there. Uh, whereas inverse kinematics is like where does my hand need to be? Position the arm relative to that. So that's how that works. Lord, your mouse is huge. I feel like whenever people say this, I make it bigger. Um, pointer size. Okay, you've brought this on yourself. Let's go back. Oh, it's so hard. These the Windows mice are so inaccurate. Like, look what's going on. Um, and also, Blender's cursors do not scale, <laughs> so you get really pixelated ones. Uh, let's make this, this is so hard to work with, a little bit bigger. Let's maybe go to two here. In fact, maybe I should start with a line. Yeah. What's the advantage of doing IK in geometry nodes? Well, mostly for fun. 
to be honest. Um, yeah, there's, I mean, you could just rig it with bones. Or you could use Houdini and use the bone nodes in Houdini, the rigging nodes. Um, but then... Yeah, I don't know. Um, I guess procedural animation. If you want to do it completely in geometry nodes, like we could... I don't know if we could do it properly with this, but... Um, well, it would be... You could doctor it to do this, but basically if you have... Um, like an object, right? Oops. Uh, if you've got like a box and you move it in this direction and you have a basically a position out here somewhere and you say, okay, this is where the leg wants to be or the foot wants to be. And then you put the foot there, but then this is moving, right? So you need a position as well where the new position, right? If this has moved over here now, and this is where it's saying the bone, the, the foot should be. It's basically going to say like when this distance exceeds some amount, um, you should put the you should put the leg there instead. So it should go from there basically to here. Uh, so you can procedurally animate. Um, also, I'm doing it because I haven't seen anybody else do animals or creatures in geometry nodes yet, and it's fun to be the first, the first that I've seen anyway. Uh, it would be like for her torture like in November. Um, yeah, Blender is tiny. Can't wait to see this in Unity. Well, from what I've seen, the tutorials that I was having a skim through, which were actually all the Unity ones, now I think about it. Uh, actually, no, one was processing, the rest were Unity. Um, it seems so much simpler because people just write the code. I mean, if you know the code, it seems a lot quicker. <laughs> Did my cursor get bigger when I when you tabbed away? And it's it's what happens when people tab away. Like I'm alerted by the fact that my cursor gets bigger. Um, so I'm going to actually start out with mesh lines. We're going to start out with one mesh line, which is going to be our start. Uh, we're going to have another one, which is going to be our end. It's not actually another one, it's just a transformed version. Uh, we're going to be moving this one in the X. I, you know, I can't actually work with my cursor this big. It's too big for for blend. Wait, it gets bigger? Oh no, it doesn't. Blender doesn't, Windows doesn't even know how big the cursor should be. Maybe we go with this. That seems reasonable. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, there's a limit to how much I can make the the cursor. <laughs> can you make the cursor the uh, the UI scale that low? I've already got it set to one point three, and my window scaling is one hundred twenty five percent because I'm old and can't see good. Oh no! How do I undo this? Okay, I can zoom in a little bit there. So 0.25 is the smallest you can go. Okay, that's too big on the other end. Let's maybe go back to 1.3. Wow, this still feels huge. Um, right. Yeah, so we've got a line, and we've got a, uh, another line which is offset some distance. Uh, what I wanted to what I want to do is I want to take legs and I want to position them on my start line, and I want to reach them over to my end line. The smooth scaling, Control Middle Click, just the same as in three D. Control middle click lets you give like a bit of a smooth scale on there. Super useful. Um, yeah. Uh, okay, so this is my endpoints, right? So it's important that you start out if you're doing multi legs with multiple legs uh, because there's just a, like a whole bunch of additional maths that we need to do, especially when it comes to doing our field index because it's not actually 
going to be like, oh, well, it's the field at index number four. It's going to be like at four, but then it's also going to be at eight or nine and then at 13 and then at, you know, and whatever, and, and it will just keep going up. Um, but for us to be able to set that, we can't just plug in the, the index because the index is going to be different for every single one. So we have to like snap the index. I mean, that's actually basically it. We just snap the index, but it's a process. So I want to make sure that we're starting at the beginning here um, just to make sure that we get it all. So I'm going to index, sorry, I'm going to instance on my start lines, instance on points, um, a bunch of lines, mesh line. And this mesh line is going to be just like how I had a controller before. The controller is a bit simpler this time because we are only interested in the segment length and the vertex count, um, the segment count, sorry. Uh, which again means I'm going to be adding one on here. Add one, let's just put this into a value or an integer actually. So if I set this to three plus one is four, but it has three segments, right? So control G, set this to three to begin with, actually just always three, so that's segments. Obviously, do this with as many as you want, but you will just need to be, you know, like plugging in your vectors in a little bit differently. Uh, let's set this to float. This is our segment length. And I'm going to set my length to be one. We can change it later if we want to. This is our controller. Uh, I might call this one the multi controller because it already got a control data block. L. Cool. So the actual spacing on our mesh line doesn't matter. We're going to be dealing with all that procedurally based on our segment length. Uh, but I will be. Am I going to apply an IK inside geometry nodes? Yeah, but Sam, we actually um, we already have one working here. So this is all geometry nodes based, and you can see it's all like proper. Proper IK there. Pretty fun. Uh, what we're working on now is multi IK. So basically, like, however many legs you want, you can have. Um, so, anything special I need to do here? Yes, I need to capture a few bits of information, and we need to do it before we. So it's important that you're on like a, a more recent build of Blender. Like this won't work on 3.0 because we need to capture attributes, the positions of our actual mesh line positions. And this is our start position, right? So this is start, like the actual vector start, like the, the beginning of each foot. Um, and this gets captured on the points before they become the line so that the whole line knows what its start position is going to be and it's going to be relative to its start position each time so that's how you can kind of uh, inherit data down the tree uh, i'm in 3.2 you just need to go up to preferences experimental named attribute nodes if you don't have experimental then it's developer extras um, but i think you do spool uh, yeah named attribute nodes is in here i've still not tried the new curves or any of the hair nodes. I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm missing out by not doing that. Uh, we also need to transfer all of our endpoints to the feet, or to, to the points as well, because we need to know what the endpoint is for the whole chain um, on each one. And we simply just transfer this and capture it before we instance, right? So capture before the instance, and then once you've done everything over here, it's going to, we're going to be able to pull this data through. We're going to be doing by index, but you could do this by nearest face interpolated or by nearest. Um, I think by index is probably the best because it's going to allow you to do like the interpolation because you're going to be able to actually move the points, the endpoints. Um, and I think that's basically how 
you're going to be able to get that like procedural walking because you can basically say like once this point is too far away from here you should move it over there but you should do so via a parabola or something like that uh, I think stuff like this is easier in things like Unity because you can actually just do it in the re uh, the oh what's it called in the update function so you can do stuff based on like the simulation time or the frame time rather than it needing to be like kind of constantly processed like in Blender so what am I transferring? I'm transferring the position attribute from my endpoints up here. I'm just going to frame these ones up and call these ones end. Uh, I am also going to just pull these forwards a little bit. So I'm going to add some reroutes down here. So this is my start points. These are my endpoints. There we go. So you can name reroutes as well, just keep your sanity. Start and end, there we go. And now I'm also going to re-realize these instances and now we've got real geometry which contains our attributes. So we can start working on these properly. So the first thing we need is just a set position node we're going to be obviously setting all of the positions and then we're going to be doing our step back and step forward stuff just the same as we had before uh, let me actually bring these forwards as well just to make sure that I've got them somewhere a bit more familiar I want to make sure these node trees are still readable because nobody can learn from them otherwise okay so the step back is going to be very slightly different, right? Because there's a little bit of index control that we need to do here. So, well, the first thing we need is actually our vector switch. So let's just grab that. There we go. That's fine. We're doing these three segment four vertex lines. So we're good with just this, right? Uh, we need to control our our indices um, and our step back if you remember how we did it last time we inverted the step um, the index sorry uh, so what I need basically is to take the index um, like this and we need to subtract from it or oh, sorry we need to subtract it from the number of segments however this is no longer just the index. It's, we don't just have 0, 1, 2, 3. What we have is we have 0, 1, 2, 3 times 10 because that's how many points we've got at the beginning. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and so on. Um, and so what we can do is we just need to modulate this by the correct numbers. Um, are the correct numbers 4, actually? So 0, 1, 2, 3... Yeah, if three is the remainder, then actually it needs to be four. So it has to be modulo by the segment count plus one. So modulo by the index of, sorry, modulo by the number of vertices, not by the number of segments. Hopefully this is making some sense. Sorry, I'm going around in circles a bit here. So let me grab my segments plus one. This is what's being modulated. So if this is three, this is now four my indices going like one two three four five six seven eight nine modulate by four we'll go zero one two three zero one two three zero one two three zero one two three and then we can subtract that from three so now it goes three two one zero three two one zero three two one zero which is perfect because that's the index order that we want over here all right so first things first what we want is the end positions in point zero. So there we go. These are our end positions in that first point. The next thing I want to do, let me just collapse some of these so they're a bit more visible. I'm going to rename this one. It's plus one. And again, this is one of those things where it's like, oh, I wish if it collapsed, it would just take this function into its header. So I could just say, oh, okay, 
it's a plus one or whichever, however that wants to work. Okay, so we've got our end going through there. And these are our segments. I'm pulling these things aside with reroutes and things because I know I'm going to be squashing this down into one step back group. Uh, but just for now, we'll keep them open. Um, and we need our steps. I think our steps are unchanged. It's still just the same as we had before, which is basically take the vector at the current position, uh, take the vector that we just had before, subtract one from the other so that we've got direction, and then normalize that to make that length of one. Scale it by your segment length to make it the correct distance, and then add that back to the start point so that it's like the, the correct step in the correct place and that's your position uh, with our step backwards just as we did before as well we only need two of them uh, but the index is where it gets a little bit different right so let me just plug these both in here I wonder if I should maybe just do one and then it's basically the same when we get to the other one let's start with one so this is not confusing exactly, but uh, it just takes a little bit of like mental agility, I think, to get there. Basically, this step, rather than it being two, if we think about this being like zero, one, two, three, uh, I'm going to do this in like full numbers, five, six, seven. So this is like two runs, right? Two legs. I don't want just index number two, I'm specifically wanting uh, index number two and index number six. But I can't just plug in a list of like, oh, well, I want two and I want six. Um, what I need to do is basically make sure that all of the vectors which can plug into this have either the numbers two or six on them. And to do this, what I can do is I can take my index, I can snap it, which is another math node, here. If I snap it by segment plus one, then what we've got is we've got zero, 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 four, 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 four. And then to this, I can add whatever my offset is going to be. So I can add two to it. So now basically each section of this is four, sorry, is, is two in addition to the snapped value, right? So then it'll be six, 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 six. And you can see that that is what we're aiming for here. I know it's like a little bit difficult when, it, especially if you're coming from software where it's like really list orientated um, and you just kind of want to be like two and six, right? But in this case, we have to be basically a little tricky about it and make all of the indices become our list. And we do that by snapping. So index, snapped by segment count plus one that basically means each block becomes the lowest value of that block zero four um, eight <laughs> right eight i think uh, and then we can add whatever it is so in this case it's going to be um because we're going backwards it's going to be two and then one and then this should be our start point okay so add in this case two plug this into our index, make sure that we have our previous vertex coming through, which is the end, or basically just the, whichever one was above it. The index is dealt with, segment length can come from over here, and the current location is actually just from the position node. So let's grab the input position over here. Boom, there we go. So now we've got a little bit of a finger coming up think you can kind of see how this is going. Ah, oh, Lucas is working on an expression node that's going to be amazing. That would be actually excellent. Is that going to have variable sockets? Like uh, if you type in, I don't know, height, then you'll get a new socket called height, because that would be so useful. Because obviously, like when you're typing in expressions, you really want to be able to add as many variables as you need. Uh, so this one's going to be plus two. I'm going to collapse this step one as well here just to make things a little bit more compact. And I'm going to add a new one, another step. This one should be one because we're going, uh, we're counting backwards, we're out backwards. 
so like three, two, one, zero. Uh, so this one, instead of being two, this one is going to be one into that. The previous vert comes from the one above. The segment length comes from the segment length. The current position comes from the current position. And this goes into number two. And that should be working all right in there. And then we can just go for number three, which I'm going to stick on our start positions. Just like that. All right. That wasn't too hard, was it? Let's, uh, let's move this around and just make sure that they kind of work. Yeah. It's not super accurate because if we're only going like backwards, so we're only doing half a step, but we do now have 10 fingers. Excellent. You can have as many fingers as you want. Let's just continue this. Let's make this into a packet. Uh, so control G. I'm just going to control X all of these things which I just made. So what's this first one? This one should be our end. Um, node label is still plus two. Thank you. Yes, this one should be plus one. Always important to keep things visible, especially if you're collapsing them. I know some people don't like collapse nodes. Some people don't like the like control H hidden socket. Uh, I think it's, I don't know, it's just really up to how you want to work with stuff, I think. Um, so we've got our end. This final one, which is plugged into the three, this one should be our start, confusingly, just because it's backwards, right? So the current position is just going to be position. The segment length is the segment length, and what's the value? Oh, that's the number of segments. And we can change that to an integer. I'm going to make all of these hidden as well. Um, great. And I should be adding another section for the poles. In my version, when I last did multi feet, multi legs, I did not do the pole correction, pole alignment. So it's going to be interesting to see if we can do pole alignment on multiple legs. I'm hoping we can. It should make things a little bit more stable, although actually that pole does have a weird like anti-magnetic section. So we'll we'll see <laughs> when we come to that. I will just add that pole in here. There we go. Um, I kind of want to use the same labeling as I had before. So segments, segment length, start, end, pole, position. Got segments, segment length, start, end, pole position. Nice. And this one can be called backwards, or maybe I'll put an M first so that you know it's like multi, multi step back. And I should really come up with another way to do poles on here as well. Um, let's just hide that value. And I'm just going to connect these up to the output so I can do my like easy connection through. There we go. Let's stick the position down to the bottom. Offset the pole for each segment. Um, I mean, we're going to be basically uh, having another point. Uh, ultimately, when we have this, we'll I'll stick. So when we get to the end, basically, we're going to take a, a sphere and we're going to distribute points on it. That's going to be the start point. So we're going to distribute points on the floor. They're going to be the end points. And the the poles, I'm basically just going to take the start points and push them out along their normals so that I have the correct number. Uh, the end points, I think you can probably work with just transferring by proximity um, or like nearest face. Um, but just for now, I'm going to add another one of these just in here. I'm going to stick it afterwards, start, end, and then pole. Pole like this. And we just, just do the same, actually, just the same capture and transfer by index. That should be absolutely fine. Plug this one up here. Plug in the positions just the same. And I can take another one of these reroutes and just make sure that I call it pole in here. There we go. Cool. Stick this in, stick this over here. 
Man, it looks so simple when you've got it all in groups. Uh, let's grab another one of these. Uh, we're going to call it. Uh, so make a new data block before you start changing anything. It's always important. Um, forwards. This is our forward step. And I can just join this up like so. And I can join this up to the position like so. And this one's basically the same, right? The only difference is that we don't need to invert our um, our indices. We can just take it straight from the modulo. And but the rest of this is still the same. And we also want to be starting off here. Instead of starting at the end, we need to be starting at the start. And instead of finishing at the start, we need another step. We want, we got to do that final step. So let's come down here. Uh, oh, and also I need these to go in the correct order now. So zero, one, two, three. So let's rename this one as well. Uh, F2, this one's going to be plus one. This one is going to be plus two. And we're going to have add two. And we're going to have another one, control shift D, so that you bring that input, plus three. And this one is three, like so. So this is the index. And again, the position comes through the position. The previous step comes from above, and the segment length comes from the segment length. This should just plug into the number three. And in theory, if I now move my end point too far away, there we go, great. And if we move sideways, and if we move up, this is all looking so good. The great thing about this as well is that you can just totally, like, you can do hard surface stuff with this. I just really like the idea of this being like, I don't know, like if you look at um, any of Ian Hubert's like lazy tutorials, he did that, that really great one, which is like how to do a robot arm. And he's got like IK and parent child bones and things like that. And that, it's just like a really nice tutorial, but it's like such a nice use case as well. I really like that. Uh, what happens if we rotate this? Can we do that? Rotating the y axis hell. Yeah, we can. <gasps> oh, you know how centipedes walk and it's like a sine wave going down them. We could totally do that. We could totally do that. Let me just, let me just uh, throw on a substitute. I'm like so far from finishing, but I'm already like, oh yeah, insects. Let's grab an offset. Combine X, Y, Z. You need a form finding node with this tag. The, well, you can just download the file. I'll send you the file afterwards. It's all good. Uh, let me just, um, we can do, Oh, if we did it spatially, then we could move our creature around and its legs would like. Oh, or maybe we should do it like transfer from an, from a, a spline. So you could have it like move along a spline and then you could have the sine, the, like the sine wave be mapped along the spline factor and transferred back to your thing. So that that's going to control the up and down of the endpoints. And then as you like basically just move this uh, this thing around the spline, its legs are just like, you know, damn, so good. Uh, so let's just take the, uh, let's take a map range into the Z. We're going to go from minus one to one to be zero to like, uh, at this scale probably one. This is a huge centipede. We can maybe send our offset a little bit less and we can maybe go for some more legs. Oh God, this is going to be so horrible. Um, oh, but like what a nice fall off. Oh my God. I kind of want to loft over this. Oh my God. Are we going to do this? I'm so distracted already. I'm so sorry. Let me just, um, let me just, I'm going to do, okay. So it's going to have three steps, right? We, we'll get back to the poles, don't worry. It's going to have three steps. And then we can loft over this. Like, uh, loft. Does this just work on anything? No. I can't remember how my nodes work. Uh, mesh to curve. Does this. <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, and then we can do our sine wavy thing. 
which wants to be time. And then I really like the fall off when it just basically goes to like, I cannot reach. Um, but what do we want? We want the position X plus. So, uh, so sign into here. This is going to be a multiple because we want to be able to change the wavelength. This is going to be an add. This is going to be the combine X, Y, Z. I'm sorry if this is hard to follow for like newer people because I'm basically just like, I know the node, so I'm just working backwards here. I'll explain them in a sec. Uh, separate XYZ. Position. And we're going to be adding the scene time, which I should probably also put on a multiply just so I can like control the speed, right? Interesting. Not amazing. I mean, it's not really working. Did I do that correctly? Oh, it's because of this, right? Uh, let's go in the Y direction. Oh, sign. I should have put that as a sign, like S I N E. <laughs> oh, that's too slow. Let's go a little bit faster. Mm hmm. Oh, yeah, that's the good shit. Maybe we bring it in just a little bit so it's more like leggy. And maybe we make it stand up a little bit higher at the highest points. Ooh. I love it. <laughs> wow, bagger. Uh, let's change our U resolution down to like the lowest we can. Uh, three, because we've got, oh wait, no, four, because we've got four words. There we go. Ooh. Oh, we need more points lengthways to make it nice and rolly. Oh, wait, we've got U and V curves. I forget this node is so great. Mm. Damn, super satisfying. Okay, well, basically you can do anything with legs. This is what we're learning here today. More things should have legs. Um, what was I doing? Oh, polls. Okay. Uh, Perz, I'm entrusting the form experiments to you. For now, I'm just going to go through the, uh, the how to make the thing do the thing. Oh, it's 11 p.m. here. Uh, what time is it here? It's nine. No, it's not. <laughs> it's seven. I saw the 24 hour clock and freaked out. It's uh, 10 past seven here. It's a beautiful evening in the north of England. It's been a beautiful day, actually. Okay, let's go with this. Uh, two meters. Right, so I just need to do my poles. Excuse me, sorry. Um, which go into my Ford category. Only need to be done on the, fur, the second. Um, wait, what's going on? Oh, it's literally, it's exactly the same. We don't need to even think. We just drop it on here, plug in the start, the end, and the pole. In fact, let's just bring our thing first here. Start, end, pole. Do the same here. Do the same there. Control H on this. Control H over here. Control H over here. Great. I think that's I think that's it. Uh, so in theory, if I move my poles left and right in the X direction, well, I mean it's not perfect. Oh, they should be in the Z axis. That's why. Okay, except for that weird twisty bit. I think it's pretty good. Okay, cool. So let's make a little spaghetti monster. Let's just, I mean, okay. So basically what we need is we need an, a bunch of input points, a bunch of pole points and a bunch of uh, end points. So like, sorry, start points, 
12 points and 10 points. Um, this is all done, right? Uh, let's maybe make it do six steps instead. So we'll go like this. And instead of it all being, I mean, it looks so technical, but it's actually probably the simplest thing we've ever made on this channel. I mean, like satisfying, but like less than two hours for two setups. Uh, what is inverse kinematics? Well, I'm glad you asked. Inverse kinematics is the idea that you, instead of going forward kinematics, which is like, okay, I'm always using my arm here. Let me just actually change to the camera so you can see. So if you have like your arm, right? And I'm saying, if I, if I want to pose my hand over here, um, I can basically say like, okay, well, I'll move my arm up and then I'm going to move the next part forwards and then I'm going to move my hand like around. That's forward kinematics. If you want inverse kinematics, that's like saying, okay, well, I want my hand here. So you put your hand there and then the arm basically follows. It's like less, um, I mean, you can, well, you can basically see it here, right? So it's following the end point. When the end point gets too far away, it reaches for it, but it can't get it. Uh, the idea as well is that it reaches towards, like the elbow control is like on this pole. So you can basically do this. They do this a lot with uh, robotics. So if you think I want like a, done that thing where I'm showing my face instead of the screen. So if you've got um, robotics and you've got uh, like a, a thing and you know that, okay, this is where the robot is over here. And I've got an apple that I want to pick up over here. And I need to basically stick the joint up here. All of this calculation is done for you. And your robot will just go like point and grab the rope, grab the thing. Rather than being like, okay, well, me as the engineer needs to program in all of these different joint actuations. You can just say grab the grab the thing. There's often when you're doing character animation, you do like IK FK switches, so inverse kinematics, forward kinematics, depending on whether you want to be able to like move the leg explicitly, like if you're kicking something, or if you just want to do something where it's like okay, it stood on the floor. If you're playing video games and you see in the settings there's like an option under the character graphics for inverse kinematics, you turn that on their legs, your character's legs, will like stand on top of the ground at the correct heights, rather than just like both being at the same length. So I don't know if that actually explains what it is, but there we go. We went from learning binary to learning how to rig a robot. You just wait until I uh, start building a house or start converting a van. We're just gonna get a bunch of videos on like, and this is how you redo a radiator and a cooling system. Okay, we need a few fewer legs. In fact, I wonder if I should... I'm trying to make this file like as easy for people to just like pick up and start playing with themselves. So I might, I'm not gonna pause it here, but I'm gonna frame stuff up and I might actually just duplicate it. So there's like a simple version that people can just dip into and play with. Uh, let's grab this frame. This is our, so our IK setup actually. Um, this is our, make the geometry oops make the legs and this is our get the attributes uh, i'm like actually on holiday like it's well, it's a four-day weekend and then i've also got nine days off work so because me and my brother and sister are going up to scotland to do some hiking uh, but it's like my first time off, like time, time off to uh, yeah, to be able to actually do stuff and not think about Blender all the time, which is just ridiculous. Spool. To increase the number of segments, would you have to increase the number of vector, the size of the vector switch and add one more step iteration? Exactly. I was trying to find a way of doing this. You are ridiculously clever. So I started to think that maybe you could do something with the accumulate field node if you can that would be incredible um i think you have to do it like in this one did i have multiples oh no did i just redo it in this one damn i did uh well uh i did have one that was like 10 basically uh 10 steps but i had to manually 
duplicate them and it's, it's not difficult you just come in here and you add more vectors switch toggle things and you just add more and the good thing about that as well is that you can have fewer you know i can come in here and i can set this to two and you can always you know you can do 10 and then you can be like well i want three instead uh, but it will compute all of it so it will be slower to compute overall uh, i'm not sure if there's something up with those accumulate fields but it definitely doesn't seem to be as performant as you might think um, the accumulator can't be used okay it's just because it needs to like take the information forwards i think doesn't it like you're neither finishing a geometry step you're literally just like taking it from the node above it uh, it's a shame we don't have loops or something that would be uh that would let us do it but never mind all right i'm gonna um if, if you're wanting to download this file and have a play with it do you know what i'm actually just going to save it now and i'm going to upload it to the resources on discord so if you want to have a play and then i'm going to keep working on it we're going to build it up to have a little a little octopus kind of creature uh where do we want to put this uh where do we want to find it, it should be under tutorials live streams IK stream nice and small cool so if anybody's interested in like using it as it is right now rather than waiting till the end and i release it on patreon um the like the current state is on discord if you just go into discord and you go down to resources you'll find it in there so then don't need to worry about stuff now let's grab our start poles and ends and i can just delete them we can grab our, uh, we're gonna grab an icosphere, just cause I always like using icospheres. <laughs> you ran out of coffee, now you're sad. There's never an excuse. You should just get more coffee. Oh, the kitchen update, Elswin, yeah. Uh, let's grab the I feel like I'm like so out of sync with the chat. I'm sorry if I'm missing loads of stuff. Oh, but head to Kamikaze, yeah. In the UE5 demo, for sure. I mean, basically anytime you see characters animated, it will be a mix of IK and FK. IK saves people a lot of trouble. FK is like the simple forward kind of thinking. Uh, yeah. But you can be more prescriptive with uh, Ford kinematics versus inverse kinematics. All right, so we've got ourselves a little ball. This is going to be the head of our creature. I'm going to actually position this now on the, oh dear, on the head node here. Set this to relative, set the position to the translation, and there we go. I'm just going to make sure that I leave this as one. You don't have to, but it means that later when we actually build the creature, and it's going to be built with cube marching because or marching cubes because i like the blobby texture i just really like that kind of claymation thing so all of this is going to um, basically i'm going to use like a sphere stf from the toolkit masks selection sphere i can set radius in here of one do that and now i have an stf which is the correct size and shape on the correct position i'm just basically using this as a as a thing that I can instance or create points on. Excuse me. Distribute points on faces. We don't do too many. Um, and I should probably distribute them mainly on the bottom. That would probably be a good idea. Uh, so let's make a selection. Toolkit masks selection normals. 
mask goes into the selection going for the bottom face and we'll increase the deviation just until we get uh, somewhere around here should be fine just so they're mostly on the bottom there you can always randomize it if you want to you've built three kitchens since december plus custom bed and a day bed set apart from the regular windows and doors that's good going in my head, I apologise for this, uh, in my head you were retired, but the fact that you're pumping out that much from your workshop is insane. I built a kitchen once, I mean, I used to fit kitchens, like pre-made kitchens, but I also built a custom bespoke one as well, and it's not a small amount of work doing, like, all of the doors and the, like, the drawers, if you're doing, are you doing dovetail drawers? That's just like, oh man, you get pretty good at cutting dovetails accurately, but um it's t it's like so much more work than it see even though you know it's going to be a lot of work at the beginning i don't know it just feels so much more uh let me go for pass on disc so i can actually have some distance in here yeah that'll do okay so these are my start positions I'm actually just going to make sure that my rotation is actually aligned to the normal as well because that first step is basically rel relative, like the backwards walking is relative to the initial one, right? So if I just take my instance and points now, you can see that they all point straight up. That's not very realistic, especially seeing as the legs are ultimately going to be pointing more or less down. I could start with them straight down or what I'm actually going to do is start with them straight out along the normal. It's quite simple if you've used the distribute with distribute points on faces because there's a rotation that you can just plug into the rotation and now we've got them along the normals okay let me do a little bit of network cleaning clean that along there so once we've got these points uh we need to do a little bit more we need to basically offset these to create our poles uh so this is our Start points, end points, and pole points. Not dovetails, but you do them on the CNC. Oh, okay, you've got a proper dovetail cutter. Yeah, we always just used to use saws, <laughs> like hand saws. I think it's because we did it so infrequently, like a whole kitchen. Like, we'd do dresses and things, but yeah, we would do, like, hand cut dovetails. I envy your CNC. Oh, soft, soft mount ones. Yeah. To be fair, using the wooden rails is always just, they just end up sticking. Well, like people don't expect things to be, they don't expect wood to change so much between winter and summer, but it's like, actually there's a huge change when you have humidity down. Uh, like humidity differentials anyway let's take our positions and we're going to set the positions of these points we're going to offset them along the normals and that's fine actually because we're only pointing towards them it doesn't really need to uh like what Wait, Falk just said something crazy. Open bracket, close bracket, open bracket, close bracket is not a palindrome. Like it's not the same backwards and forwards. But open bracket, close bracket, close bracket, open bracket. Ugh. Oh my God, I see what you're doing there. I really don't like that either. Oh damn, the symmetry looks so much better. But yeah. That's like one of those things that just like breaks your head. Yeah, and, and also like if people want softwood or like uh, if people are like, oh, I want to save money and get like a pine dresser and then they want their drawers fitting like closely or you, you pair them back like too much according to them and then they're like, oh, these drawers are too gappy. And it's like, you just wait until winter and they will be jamming. <laughs> you won't even be able to open them if there's any more on there. Okay, so we've got our set position, we've got our poles. 
these are these points, that's good. And we're transferring these by index. Now for our endpoints, we can either just put some on the floor or um, I was just wondering like how many points do we want to make? Um, Because I want this to be variable, but I guess we'll just end up going to more points. I mean, so, okay, so on my endpoints, I'm going to do a transfer by index. Am I? Maybe we won't actually. Oh, didn't mean to do that. Uh, let's just grab a plane and we'll we'll create, we'll create a floor plane. So uh, grab a mesh primitive grid. Oh, wow, we're working at a really big scale here. Let's make this 10 by 10 three vertices, that's probably fine. I might go a little bit higher. In fact, yeah, let's go up to 50. Is that enough? Did I just do 500? Yes, I did. Wireframe is 50 enough for me to get a little bit of like proximity shrinkage. We've done banks of four doors, two side lights and a pair of French in the middle. And the gaps are tight in the winter and huge in the summer, yeah. I remember the, uh, I think I've probably said this before, but I remember the coffee cupboard that we had at work because we were just in a barn basically. Um, so it would get like, I don't know, like maybe 30 in the summer when it was like baking down on top of the roof. And then in winter it would get down to like minus five, minus six in the barn. It was like a, a shed kind of workshop. And the coffee cupboard that had the, there was like a microwave and a kettle in it. Um, in the summer and they would literally you could like put your hand in between the two doors which were both pine um and they weren't like frame doors either they were just solid like laminated pine board and so there was like loads of horizontal shrinkage and you put your hand in in the summer and then in the winter you could like not even shut them but you'd find that if you had shut them and then you'd go away and then it would like have a really bad rainy weekend or something come back in on monday and they you would there was no way you would get them open without like breaking the hinges out. Just like always reminds you just how much like wood is a, I don't know, like it's one of those materials that's like its own thing. I think a lot of people, especially a lot of young designers, they get used to designing for homogenous man-made materials like MDF or like uh, metals or plastics. And then they just don't realize that wood like has so many of its own characteristics. Oh, Oswin, you should find the, uh, if you've got it handy, you should grab the picture of the front door for the famous person you did. You should always flex about that. It's a beautiful door. Is it red door? Um, right, let me get my endpoints here. So we're just doing basically distribute points on surface. Probably gonna do pass on disk, that's fine. Do up to the end here. And we're doing them by index, I think we should do. On the wet coast. Oh, are you in Canada? Is that where you are in the northwest? To be fair, the UK gets very, we're like very temperate here. We don't get super extremes. Um, let's go and have a look at our legs. Okay, these are not looking too good. And the reason is because all of our points are miles away. Uh, let's make sure our segments are a bit longer. Let's maybe go for three. Mm, that's probably too long. Let's go for two. Oh, Vancouver Island. I was watching a video this morning about um, how, like the 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 divide between can Canada and America, or can sorry Canada and the New United States, and how there's that like twenty meter slot that's like not actually a straight line. Um, and how it there's just a bunch of places that got cut off like vancouver island has like a little island off the end of it and then people it's got an elementary school on it or something and kids have to to get to the secondary school have to like go up into canada and then back into the united states uh, see you later fog uh so i think i probably just want to be scattering locally uh, portugal 
just uh, remember that when people say Brigad, like the O at the beginning and the end, they're silent. So Portugal's beautiful though. I love Portugal. It's, it's like such a nice place. I want to do distance from points to basically mask out a place where we can have feet to be pretty much underneath it, wherever it is. Um, best way to do this is to mask by distance from this location. That's fairly easy to do, especially if you've got the toolkit. You can just grab a selection sphere based on this location. This is the mask. The radius can be three meters. Hmm. I feel like it's not as happy as I was hoping. Mainland, oh, Point Roberts. Hey, go artist. Oh, are these still going by index? Let's do that by nearest. Maybe nearest face. No, nearest. There are no faces on points. So now if I just bring this up to Ah, oh, now we're still getting that thing where it's like... Oh, it's so spidery though. Ooh, I love it. Um, let's make these a little bit shorter. 1.5 maybe. Okay, and let's just do a very quick cube march thing so that we can actually get some mesh to look at here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my, I'm going to take another selection sphere up here. The radius of this cube mesh uh, is currently one. Let's just put this onto a value so that I've actually got it pulled off here so that I've got them both. I said it's a one to begin with. I'm going to connect up to this SDF. I'm going to move that across here. And we're going to just marching cubes this. So let's grab. Uh, so all of these meshes, these curves that I'm working on here, I can just do a geometry proximity to the edges. I need to work out the scale of where we're working. So I'm going to also just take. Um, oh, and we should also take the. Oh, yeah, Kim Catchall. I remember this, yeah. Sorry, my uh, the memory evaded me before. Let's grab another one of these. I'm just going to use the preview mesh. This is actually a mesh. Oh, actually, that's not going to work for renders, so let's not do that. Let's do it with the Icosphere transformed. This one. And join this one up. And pull it across. So the reason I'm doing this is so that I basically have these two um, just for a bounding box. So geometry bounding box on here. And I want to take this bounding box and I want to make it bigger around its center. So if you've got my toolkit, use the geometry no wait, utilities transform plus, which is basically the same as a transform node, but it has a custom center, so you can center things. Very useful. Um, and I can make this maybe 1.5 times bigger. Just to make sure it's definitely going to basically contain everything. There's that bounding box. That gives me the minimum max to use with the marching cubes node, which always just takes a few minutes to add here. I can go in like this and like this. And we can plug in our threshold here. Great. That's. Oh, wait. <laughs> that should go into the field there. Awesome. That's looking good. I can turn the bit off. And now we can start mixing some stuff. Cool. So basically, the edges, if I use this instead, you can see we've got a bunch of legs. Um, Raz is super low here. Let's go up to 50. That's pretty much all right. Uh, I don't like how they're glitching around so much. Let's 
hideous. Um, what I do want to do in that case is probably just transform, sorry, transfer by index, I think, yeah. Just to a, a basically like a small portion of nodes, sorry, a small portion of points. As long as I have fewer points on the floor than I have up top, then things should be all right here. Um, and maybe I want that center just to be normal. Let's go for different seeds until I find one which has pretty much unlinked legs. Uh, we can also get some smoothing on these legs so that they're a little bit more uh, right so first of all i'm just going to randomize the index going in here just so that i've got like a bit of a difference uh, my max should probably be the number in here so this is going to be the domain size one so let's put point cloud point count into the max there we go so i'm not moving the points i'm just Recalculating which ones go to them. Maybe I have a few fewer points as well. I feel like this is really sliding. And have we got some length issues going on here? Interesting. So this is definitely going to be a problem if that's if we're literally stretching out this section. So what is going on here? Somewhere we have made a mistake. If I don't do my poll corrections. Do we have enough iterations? I feel like six should be enough, but maybe it's not. Jesus, that really went twitchy. Um, so all of this glitching that you can see, where it's like left and right, I think that is the, that's what the polar line is trying to help hold on to there. Did we correct our forward and backwards? One, two, three. That's all correct. That's all correct. And two, one, zero. Yeah, that's all correct. Okay. Just check in. Cool. Uh, there's definitely something going on in here. One of my segments is too short, and I'm trying to work out why. It is all being connected through. And this all looks pretty correct to me. I think it's just in that rotation, there's something going on with it. Oh, I wonder. I wonder. Did we set our segments to two and then not change it back? So I wonder if it's just some errors that go on basically with the rotation. Man, this looks so much worse now. Proper like War of the Worlds stuff. Um, <clears throat> anyway, the pole alignment seems to have more errors when it's on just two segments. I wonder if it'd be better if you've got two segments or like fewer segments to have it on the backwards and the forward step and maybe more steps. Uh, we've still got a little bit of shrinkage on there but I think it's a bit better it just seems better able to hold itself with tool with two what is the pole vector uh, I will go back through and timestamp this video but basically 
uh, what we've got is uh, the start subtract the position so if you imagine you've got your start point here like the shoulder and you've got your hand over here so that's the start and the end uh, you've got your pole up here and you've got a leg come in something like this if we want these two points basically to always point towards the pole what we've done is we've taken the vector between the start and the position which is this one here so we've got this vector let me just remove the rest of that um, this next one down is the start to the end this vector and the last one that we've got here is the start to the pole which is this vector and basically we need to make sure that this point here is rotated around this start end axis until it's the most aligned to the pole possible uh, and to do that we've basically just used cross product normalize this and then uh, dot product r cosine thanks for the clear explanation no worries <laughs> sorry i always um just have to guess what people mean <laughs> uh what point are you using for the pole oh i see what you mean um we're just using the hang on let me try and get out of this labyrinth um we've basically just taken the points on the surface and we've punched them out along the normal so if this leg is here uh that's the start there might be a point down here and the pole is basically just in line with the normal so it should hopefully not like go elbows inside it should try to like crouch down with its elbows out assuming that the points are like pretty straight down i wonder if i should if I should just ray cast those points down I think that might actually be a better idea uh, just to make sure they're basically not crossing um, so let's oh I just deleted that grid as well let's keep the grid let's just ray cast geometry ray cast the points these are the points maybe I should just ray cast actually these ones which are the poles just so that they're a little bit further out down oh wait that's the target geometry sorry uh set position from the points to the position of the hip position there we go straight down basically i could randomize it a little bit yeah let's do that um utilities random vector and let's go for a random vector between zero Actually, let's go straight down sorry minus one and we're just going to create a little bit of deviation in the x and the y here not in the z that doesn't matter there we go so now we're just pushing things basically straight down and what this means is that we should now have a fairly consistent leg position oh my god it moves with us that's not what i want um I want them to like fix onto the ground. I want them to ray cast at the beginning and then uh, not after. I wonder. Maybe I can have some fixed points. Yeah. Let me do that. So we're going to have some fixed points. Um, this transform. I'm going to just put it here and here and here. I know that's weird. It's just because I want to basically hold the hold the points where they are on the floor. I want to move it afterwards. So these get moved around uh, maybe we actually have to start a little bit higher sorry i'm just like thinking aloud here basically let's turn off auto offset now because we've got a bunch of nodes kind of where we want them i'm also going to just hide these so they're just translations control h control h there we go uh, 
that's still somewhat readable. Um, let's just grab this one up here, get rid of that. Oh no. Oh, I can just take my start position. <laughs> let's take our vector math on here, uh, vector add, and we'll just add something to the position. And we'll move this up five or something like that. There we go. Cool. And now we have fixed points on the floor. Excellent. Emils, hopefully if you, I mean, if you go through this stream kind of as if it's a tutorial, you'll have to pause quite a lot, but like the, certainly the first part was a lot, a lot simpler because we were just doing a single leg. And I think it's kind of a fun exercise to go through. Even if it's like more advanced than what you're really looking for, I think you'll learn a lot about geometry nodes just doing stuff like that. And it's fun. And you get some cool stuff to post on Instagram. So it's a win all round. Okay. Jellyfish is coming together. Let's mix some attributes on here. Plug these two together. Set this to smooth minimum. <laughs> It looks so horrible. Um, that's fine. Let's go back to the beginning. Let's maybe make our head a little bit smaller. Hmm, that's not what I was expecting to happen. You stopped using Instagram. Yeah, to be fair, I barely use it now either. I find it just a bit. Um, the knuckles on this is so horrible. Um, yeah, no, I find it just a bit of a pain as well. It's, it used to be really good, I feel like. But then, I don't know, Twitter, especially for Blender community, Twitter just got like, Twitter is just where it's at. I need more legs. I need smoothing. Mesh. Set shade smooth. We also need to set a material on here. I'm going to show you some marching cubes material blending tricks. They're not really tricks, it's just fun. Um, we also want to add some eyes. The many legged alien. Right now it's just like a monopod. It's like, hey, just hanging out in here. Uh, we can add some rotation actually. That might be fun. Um, which I would want to do to this one. Oh yeah. Oh god. If you're somebody who doesn't really like critters, I need to make my uh, my scaling a little bit bigger on here as well. Man, it's so horrible. Okay, let's go for a little bit more points. Density max can come down a little bit. Um, maybe the head should be a little bit bigger. Oh god, that's, that's giving us more legs. What a nightmare. Oh, it's so lumpy as well. Um, oh jeez, that's not what I meant. Anyway, too much fun. Um, <laughs> thank you. Oh, I can't read your name. I, I gotta learn Japanese how to read names. Ah, oh, thanks, Kevin. Let's um, make it a little bit smoother. I mean, this is 110 now milliseconds. If we go to 100, that's gonna be a little bit more laggy, but it looks so much smoother. Okay. Spikes for feet. We could, I mean, we could cover it with spikes, right? And we can do distribution based on these SDFs. So we can be like, okay, well the head, this is how we do the shaders as well. We can be like, we are gonna do the googly eyes as well. Um, yeah, so you can be like, I want spikes on the legs or the, the whatevers, right? And because we have, for example, a an SDF of the body here, just that main sphere, we can use that to control where we do our distribution. So I could go instance on points distribute on 
this view points on mesh on faces and this is the points this is the spikes i need a spike node um I guess maybe a spiral would be fun actually. Let's cover it in horns. What's our spiral gonna look like? So top radius should be zero. And the bottom radius should be pretty close to zero, but just a little bit twizzly. And then we can um, we can mess around with the scale and rotation in a minute. Well the rotation can actually be based on the Distribute points on faces, that's fine. And we probably maybe want to skin this first before we have to do like, better to do it on once and instance it rather than doing it like instance a, a bunch of curves and then uh, stress it everywhere. Uh, so curve to mesh on here. And we can do, let's do a star node. Um, we should probably also set the curve radius Man, this feels kind of like November again, when we were just like doing weird stuff. Just like whatever this comes out as is what it goes. I need to do more like creating in that kind of mindset of just like playing. I definitely got way too much into the, the regime of just being like, gotta make work, gotta make work. And I think I'm just like so ready to just not make useful stuff. Uh, let's grab a float curve. Check this on here. Uh, we're going to be starting at the full width, ending at nothing. Making sure that our star is actually pretty small. Something like this. Nice. Um, maybe it actually wants to start teeny tiny, get a bit bigger and then come back in towards nothing. And we probably want this to be like three or four. There we go, cool. Let's cover this baby with spikes. Oh cool, <laughs> that's, that's too many spikes. Um, we need some scale, let's do a random bias. Bloat. Random bias float allows us to push vectors, like push values towards one end or other. So let's set this to like 0.05. So they're mostly tiny, but some of them are longer. Yeah, easy way to make ice cream. Uh, let's go 0.1 up to like 0.3. Uh, are these upside down? Wait, I need to check my face orientation. I think I've got this inside out. I do. If you're using marching cubes, just be aware that it does fairly frequently make stuff inside out. Uh, let's just grab the mesh, flip faces. There we go, that's gonna improve matters. Join these up here. These wanna be a little bit bigger. Maybe pass on disk. And maybe we just cover the head with it. So we can do the selection. We can do a compare node on here for where this is less than, there we go. So SDFs basically become our controls for all sorts of things. Um, I kind of want to give it a little feet as well. Um, how would we do that? We need to do distance from position on a bunch of points. Like say so control J, this is our horns, obviously. Um, and then let's get this a color. Oh, that red's not too offensive. Um, I want to give it, yeah, I would really love to give it boots, like actual boots. Maybe I model a boot and then we just add it to the cube marching because that's kind of a fun thing to show you as well here. Uh, let's grab, let's do that. Um, and what we can do as well is we've got all of these curves. And we can make our legs bendy for a start. Let's do a mesh to curve. 
Uh, let's just let's move the end of this node tree forwards a little bit here. So mesh to curve, curve to bezier, handle type to auto. That's going to give us these weird floopy legs. Oh my god, it's actually so cute. Um, and then we can do human feet would look weird. I don't know, do I have any human feet? I might do. I will need to have a look. Um, that would be strange. I wonder if we can texture them properly as well, because we can probably transfer the UV map from the feet if we have like a properly unmapped UV map. It's just getting the blend correct as well. Maybe. Let's have a look. I'll see if I can get some feet. Um, let's grab... Wait, so we can also do an instance on points. Yeah, if you can get me a free foot file, just like send it to me on Discord. Get me a file. Get me, get me some foot. Get me some foot. Foot. Feet. Oh my god, my brain is melting. Uh, googly eyes on the ends of the spikes. <laughs> Oh, we need googly eyes though, so I'll make some I'll make some holes in the spikes, which we can do easily because our eyes are going to be distance fields. So you can just use the distance field to clear an area, an area for the eyes. It's great. It's a really great process. Okay, mesh to curve of these. We can take an end point. I just want to make sure that we've actually got our feet. No wait, I don't have feet yet. Uh, okay, let's just grab a cube, to stick it on the ends these, let's grab our end point selection only interested in the ends here, that's good and I want to align Euler to vector that vector is going to be the tangent the curve tangent like so Um, so that should all be fine. Maybe we can randomize the scale a little bit as well. Randomize. No, wait. Random value? Yeah. Sending a message quick. Um, why do you post it on Discord? Uh, high poly is fine. We're just going to be cube marching anyway, so that's fine. It might just not be super fast. In general, it's fine. Or asset dump if you want to share it with the world forever. Uh, this can be a float into the scale between the points. 8 and 1.2, these are my standard values. <laughs> Beautiful, thank you for the foot. Um, I think this is probably low poly enough, to be honest. I mean, there's not a lot of detail which is going to be preserved, I think. Oh, I don't have to log in, do I? Damn, I don't think I've actually got a login. Have you got a login? If you could just download it and DM them to me, that would be super useful. Huh, apparently Discord is saying that I'm streaming, which I am. I didn't realise it knew. There we go. Um... Cool. So this is going to be my feet collection. Let's give this into color as well. Orange. Let's make some eyes. It's really important that the eyes move with the rest of this. Uh, how do we do this? I had a bad process before, so for when I last did the eyes, so I'm going to make better eyes this time, I think. Um, they need to be relative to my 
thing. Ah, oh, but the position also needs to be rotated. Does it need to deal with rotation? No, maybe the eyes can just be like solid. Thank you for the OBJs there, Kalen. Let's just grab that second one here. 100K, is this even a real thing? Import OBJ. Apparently that was experimental, that's worrying. Uh, downloads, human foot. <laughs> oh my God, it's perfect. Uh, let me just close this up. Great, now we have feet. <laughs> go through this in here and disable it for for now um, oh it's really far away from its origin origin to geometry there we go great okay <laughs> bring this in here uh, let's just get rid of it in there doesn't matter we're not actually using the the mesh from it we're just shrinking shrink wrapping it to it shout out to the artist badger nice thank you badger we can just plug this one up into here <laughs> now we've got loads of feet what's going on uh curve tangent align to the z yes that's strange. Are all of our legs pointing in a weird direction? No, not even. This is like a weird, like, religious experience. Let's have a look at our legs. Uh, okay, I just need to, am I, let's go back to these. That's, uh, this is getting, yep, yeah, this is getting weird. I feel like these streams, Fairly often do you just get a bit strange. Here we go. With great power comes great responsibility. Let's maybe I want to make the toes point outwards as well, do I? I kind of want to do like a Z pointing. Um no, no, it's fine. It's fine. It's going to be strange enough. Oh, do you know what? I should actually make the... That's really important. I should make this top section be where the origin is because... Have I even not... Oh, it's because I turned off clicking. Uh... There we go, 3D cursor. Just to make sure that they get linked up in the right place. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Let's grab these as real instances. Now this is where things get a little bit slow. I mean, this is one of the many places things get a little bit slow. So when we turn this into a, um, a thing to be cube marched, right? And then we have all of these feet. Um, I think I need to also subtract a little bit from here just because we're doing this like 0 0.2 or maybe I should add that actually to here uh, I want my field to be at 0 right that's going to make my life a bit easier and to do that ideally let's do a curve to mesh because I've just got sticks here I need the distance from these to be add 0 0.2 so that should be fine like this and then we can stick these two together and I'm going to smooth minimum onto the feet as well incredible maybe that should be subtract it should be oh my god they look so horrible um, let's go like 0.8 maybe <laughs> this is so bizarre. 
Uh, at what point do we get proper topology on here? 200, I mean, this is gonna be so slow. But we do get good feet. I mean, I say good in a very loose sense there. Let's, let's go back down to 50 and uh, let's just move this down. Minus 0 0.2, sorry, minus G said minus 0 0.2. Seriously? G said minus that just doesn't feel very far. Uh, anyway, the point is that I want this to be like at the end of the leg. And there we go. Something like that is fine. 100. I kind of like that some of them are floating. It sort of adds to the macabre surrealism of this just mess that's started to happen. Um, let's add these to our join geometry as well, just so that we're getting the correct bounding box. Oh no, I need to realize them first. There we go. So faces, there we go. Now we've got our whole feet. Now I just need to add some uh, good old eyes up top. Why the long feet? <laughs> if I grab my head and they come down to the ground, Oi. it's so bizarre. It's so weird. I mean, I love it, but it's just getting a bit strange. Let's stick on a little bit of a bigger head. Um, do you know, I might actually make, I might transform the head up just a little bit as well. So let's join these two together. I'm going to just back to my fist. So I'm moving up the actual head, not the bit which is being instanced on. Something like this. And I'm going to go 1.5. Oh, good Lord. Yeah, one was fine. Oh, it's because we're getting loads more legs. <laughs> oh God. Um, it'll be friendly. As soon as we put eyes on it, it'll be happy. There we go. Isn't it? It's just so much nicer without hundreds of legs. It literally becomes solid leg and foot. <laughs> um, terrifying movie monster I just like at the corner of my eye where I read that I read it as like this would be terrifying to find in a movie theater like you're just watching a film and then this like legs just like appear next to you that would be terrifying uh, let's drop this down this density just until we've only got a few legs left haven't got a leg to stand on okay Let's add some eyes. Really just anthropomorphizing things just makes it so much better. Uh, let's add, we're gonna add some eyes which are gonna go up again. Oh wait, because we're basically working in a circle, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a vector and I'm just gonna shoot them out in that direction. Um, and because I need eyes and pupils, and I need the pupils to go out basically the same direction as the eyes, I'm gonna do a normalized vector and then scale it differently for each one. So let's do this, scale, add. Just for fun and confusion, you could add two hands to that bunch. We actually could just like randomly throw in two hands or just like some hands. <laughs> Humunculus, yeah, from Full Metal. Uh, let's see what we've got in here. So this is moving up. This is the head. Let me ju I've just got to start naming things here. Also should probably help other people. Huh. Named attributes are now tickable box. Unexpected. 
radius of the eyes that can be controlled separately. Let's do this and this. And then I'll do the whole thing up here again. So two of these are going to be pupils and two of these are going to be eyes. They're not going to be touching, so I can just use a regular minimum between those SDFs. Minimum in here. And the other ones are actually just going to be used for shaders. So also just a minimum, but we'll just pass that one out to the group output. Uh, let's throw in a few more reboots just so that we can track these along. Just don't feed it your blood and we'll be all right. But how, how will I bring it to life? We keep getting told about the end times and it's like, maybe it is time. Maybe, maybe it's, maybe we're ready now. Oh, we need to add the horns still. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't know if that's an improvement. It's certainly something. Um, print it out. If I can print it in clay, I know some people do clay printing, right? If we can print it in clay, then we could actually have it as a golem. Uh, so I'm going to pass out all of these things. Uh, I'm sort of jumping ahead a little bit. This is just like marching cubes SDF stuff. So the first one we just passed out, I think, was the eyes. The second one was the pupils. So I'm just going to flip around like that. And then this one was the body. The legs subtract that value, the thickness of the legs that can go up here as the legs. I'm basically just passing them out piecemeal legs and I'm also going to pass out the feet because they deserve it. Feet, great, so we'll use this for our um, shader. My shoes are getting really creaky. I've, I'm like wearing Doc Martens and they, I've not waxed them in a while and they're getting like really plasticky. I should probably give them some love. I feel like I've not spent any time with my shoes recently. I used to be pretty good at like keeping things waxed and looked after. It's just like one of those things that goes out the window with lockdown. Um, okay, I need to actually mix these in as well. So, smooth minimum, that's what I'm always going to be using uh, just because it gives us some good gloopy like meltedness together. So I'm going to be using the eyes with another smooth minimum. Probably going to keep this one down a little bit lower here. And that should be, that should be totally fine. So let's come out. Oh, good Lord. These are big values to have in here. Let's just set these down. Like this. Uh, we've got these holes which are the glitches from the SDF, sorry, from the marching cubes. I do just need to go in and fix that at some point. But they will be less noticeable once we've done like the higher res thing. Um, I'm actually just going to mute the horns. Yo, are you serious? For the animation Soul, Pixar had 293 controls for the main character's fingers which is around half of the controls they had for all of the Woody in the first Toy Story. I mean, Soul is like a piano film, right? It's the jazz film. I think I'm right in saying that. Um, but then 293, I do not envy the technicians who had to build that rig. Like the animators would have surely just had, oh, that's 293 controls. Nuts. I wonder if it was like shape key based or if it was like actual armature bones. Um, top or many. <laughs> Let's see what happens if we stick this out in one direction. Um, I don't know what his best side is. It's just so beautiful from all sides. Let's go negative in the Y. There we go, tiny little eye. Let's make this a bit bigger. 
it looks like a boil or something. So the reason I'm doing this in the uh, normalized node is so that you can see there it's just like sticking to the surface. I'm just going based on the radius. Makes your life so much easier. One is too big, right? Yeah, that looks really bad. Um, point 0.6. You can make boobs so easily with this. Right, let's grab the other one. And this one is going to be... Actually, I need a different scale for each one. What is going on here? Okay, so one one scale goes into the bottom, one scale goes into the top, so that I can have a different distance for the smaller pupil. There we go. Just like that, there we go, nice. Uh, this one basically wants to be the same, but a little bit more on the X. Down on the Y, up on the Z a little bit. 1.5-ish. Going for a bit of a smaller eye. Let's go 0.4. You love the feet, thank you. And that was um. Was that Kevin's idea or TT's? Or maybe Brett. These are just that. It's always not my fault. These projects, <laughs> that communal effort. Maybe a little bit bigger, 0.55. There we go. I think I probably want this to be... Oh, it was you? Shame on you. Take responsibility. <laughs> so if you want a sharper joint in your Boolean uh, with your SDFs, just reduce the smooth minimum. If I set this to zero, it'll be like sharp. If I had a higher resolution, like if I set this all to like 200, I don't want to go too much higher because otherwise it will like crack. You can see we've got like a really relatively sharp thing in there. Um, oh, and the legs, that's a shame. Because the legs are just a smoothed distance function. Yeah, never mind. Um, it's not because we can't get smooth in between the legs, basically. But that's probably fine because they're supposed to be like theoretically different. Uh, but we'll go up to like 0.2 maybe for the eyes. It's enough to like make them feel attached. Yeah, 0.2. Attached but separate. And these ones um, should basically be a little bit further the pupils but again that's just a shader thing right so we can we can come back and tweak that basically done let's make sure that we have our eyes also subtracting from this um i'm just going to use two booleans uh, sorry two compare nodes here the same but different and then we add these like this join them together where they're both true let's get the eyes back on here oh no that's the opposite uh we want this to be greater than <laughs> it looks so dumb uh let's go point three I could even set the scale based on like the distance away. So they get bigger around the back of the head. What happened to the walking? No, you, you don't need it to walk. Oh, come on, 100. I mean, it moves. Oh, actually, that's a good point. The, I think I should probably not use the marching cubes to instance the horns because they go everywhere. So I think we should use the an icosphere. Let's grab another one up here. I'm going to use a transform node on here and I'm going to use the same transforms I've used for the head, the same ra uh, radius I've used for the head. And then this can basically be our horn instance or object the horn head. Um, no, 
There we go. Just so that we don't end up changing the face order and moving all of our horns around. <clears throat> Have you seen that um, the video of the ducks that like walk in with a little flag and they jump on top of a, a, a golden retriever and like plant the flag and one of them's playing a little trumpet, but their feet are just like pat 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 pat. pat. That's how I feel like this is. Like just walking along like barefoot along stuff. Uh, okay, let's plug this up to our bus on disc over here. That should be the same radius and it should hold. Excellent. Good news. All right, let's use the SDF to control the scale of the horns as well, just a little bit. Just to give us a little bit more variation where we need it. Where are we instancing? Okay, on here. Um, oh, that's crunchy. Um, we can maybe just add to the distance from the eyes, which I think is this one. <laughs> okay, let's make that a little bit better. Um, map range and we're gonna yeah clamp is probably better let's go for a smoother step let's go for 0.5 to 1.5 and we'll go from 0.2 to 1 maybe we should actually set this to multiply so it's actually like getting bigger um, and we'll go from like 1 to 4 on the back of the head. Um, let's maybe actually go three or two. I don't want it to be like too little, but I also don't want it to be crazy. I love its little like wasp nose now in the middle. What a beautiful boy, eh? Do his little like wiggle his legs around. Okay. Let's get down to 50 so that we've got a little bit more performance to play with that. And let's throw some shaders on here because shaders make everything more exciting. So, Control S, we're going to add. Oh, maybe I should do a different shade for the horns. Um, or maybe I should add the. Should I add the horns to the cube marching? We would need a pretty high resolution, but it would make them join up. Maybe I should add the horns and add them to the cube marching. Let's do that. Uh, I'll see you later, Joey. Uh, let's grab a realize instances note. And then we can come back. <sighs> I can see the answer in feet. Can't even tell how many feet we've got at this point. They're so like, mm, is this a foot? Like real tasty toes on that one like barely attached. Let's bring this forwards a little bit as, yeah, that's probably fine. Uh, let's grab a, another group, mesh to SDF. I think I'm gonna make this one free on Patreon because it is not useful <laughs> for learning from. That, to be fair, there's still the IK stuff, but the rest of this is just like, <laughs> such a joke. Okay, let's throw this on here. Uh, okay. Wait, so if I meet that, oh boy, that goes a bit nuts. 0 0.05, and if I go for like a higher resolution on here. Yeah, we never really get high enough to make it worth it. Cool, well that answers my question. do this and I should also just make them a little bit more how big is this supposed to be well um, a banana is around about what are we saying 25 mil 20 uh, sorry 25 centimeters point two five 
rotate in the X 90 degrees. There you go, there's your banana. Your average person is going to be, uh, let's make another one of these, um, like, I don't know, 180 or, I'm sorry, 1.8. This is your average person. <laughs> yeah, he's chunky. Um, He does go below the ground with those feet attached, doesn't he? I wonder if I can make it so that the uh, the legs actually cut short and the feet are the bottom point. I mean, I, I definitely can do that. Didn't realize it was a Titan. I mean, it could be a soot ball, you know, like, uh, oh, what they called the, um, like in Spirited Away, the little soot puffs. It could be one of them. Let's make this foot just a little bit different. Uh, let's make it so we can click on it. Um, I'm actually going to go and put it so that it's the heel on that index. And <laughs> now these have stuck in, but I'm just going to trim these curves just before they go anywhere further. Can I make it so the feet stay flat to the floor? That's going to be trickier. Would it be impossible? We would need a floor object, I think. Or we could use the Z height. And like, as they approach Z equals zero, they could blend to a like, um, to an upward facing position. And as long as I make them so they're sort of floating off the end of the legs, which I think looks kind of fun, uh, Let's go here, just in the beginning. And let's just curve off the ends. So we trim off the ends of the curves here. Just give me space for those feet. Those big old clumpers. Somewhere around there. Uh, where are we actually mixing the feet? Oh, maybe the feet can actually just, let's just go for a minimum so they don't even blend. And then we can get a little bit closer without swelling. Don't want swollen ankles. And then we, as these go like towards zero, they need to, so as the points, yeah, so we should be able to do that. Uh, these are the points. We can capture an attribute on these points, I think, on the, let's just capture the Z position, basically. So separate X, Y, Z, take the Z, take the position here. So if we capture this on the leg, then what we can do is as this goes closer, so we'll use a map range on this attribute, we'll clamp it, and we will do this rotation with another line, a line rotation to vector, to, there we go, that's pretty good, <clears throat> it's not perfect because of the rotation, like the pivot point, but it's pretty good. So we want it to be zero generally, but like as it's close to zero, it becomes one, zero. And then we'll do this over, so let's just move the step and we'll do this over like a meter. So if I move these up, now they align to the legs. Uh, Maybe this should go back down to the bottom. Just trying to like work out where is best for the pivot points, but then I just need to basically make sure that whatever height the foot is, the grid position is moved up and point. So the grid is the floor. Sorry, I'm just thinking. Um, 
the oh yeah I can totally just do that here let's just grab that footing again let's put it through a bounding box here we go we can find the max min so the max subtract the min and then we can do a separate xyz uh, or actually faster we can just use a vector math on here multiply this by 0 0 minus 1 or maybe 1 because we want to move it up in the z-axis this is the offset for our plane and if we go back to the end hopefully ta-da head oh wait no head head it's going to attach onto there this wants to be actually the same as this one so let's use a separate xyz on here and the z comes into our minimum and the maximum is going to be like this add some amount so that we've got some blending distance on here uh, let's go for one meter squishy squishy nice it's all coming together let's get rid of that foot now um shader stuff right actually just before we do let's throw on a render switch just so that we've got a control for the resolution on the x the y and the z so in the viewport i'm going to go for 50. in the render i'm going to go for 200. i'm going to plug this into the group input so that we've got the show render on our over here what else do we want we might want the number of legs to be on there as well and that was basically controlled by the density yes another group input so this is the leg density great and now we can just go and shader this up uh, oh, I need to actually stick the floor in here as well. Twenty by twenty. It's a little bit off the ground. So I might also just translate this one. Yeah, there's a, every time you get to the end of something it's like oh and there's just this one more little bit uh, let's just move this up ever so slightly just until it touches the floor i'm not going to bother doing the dips on the floor this time nice awesome great okay now i can actually just as soon as i've added a set material note onto this separately so I've got one for the top one for the floor not one for the creature one for the floor uh, back to the output attributes okay um, body legs feet and let's also make a couple of materials on here ground can just be shiny and white so that roughness down to zero that's fine and the body can come in here so let's go shiny white for the ground on there the body on that top one switch over to shaders go to material preview mode and we can turn off viewport overlays great okay so well <laughs> will you render an animation this guy dancing to some happy music well 
I could actually do something like animate the Z position of him or like actually move him around to the music. Because we can like bake sound to F curves. So that might actually be a fun thing to do. Let's just have a look at this uh, materials on the marching cubes thing. It's super easy once you know how, but I don't think I've shared any information on it. So let's do this. Does anybody have any requests for music from to dance to then? Okay, these are the pupils. It's like already looking pretty evil. Maybe I need, do I need to realize the horns? Or maybe I can just put the thing on the horns. Uh, oh, that's fine actually. It's a mask. Uh, this one is the eyes. There we go. This one is the body. And we've got another one for the feet. I think there's one for the legs as well, but I don't probably need it because it's like process of elimination. There's the feet. Uh, the horns never got anything. So maybe I should put the legs. Maybe I just make them one with the body. So let's grab the geometry nodes. Uh, let's go over to the horns. Let's capture an attribute on the horns. Which is just going to be a one which I can add to the body. Uh, over here, over here, body. Yeah, I didn't get anything, but it kind of works with the body. Uh, it needs to be, I think I just need to realize them. I know it's going to be slower, but it saves me having to actually think. And I like that. Realize instances, here we go. There we go, now it's all just geometry, right? Uh, cool. So let's start out with the uh, the body, let's grab a math, vector math, sorry, map range node. We're just going to basically pull out a little bit. This is going to be our like base color. And we're just going to mix RGB on here. Basically mix between, I think before I just went with like a purple for the head, like a super dark purple, just because it made him look, made him look sweet and jellyish. Maybe reduce the roughness, or sorry, increase the roughness. Now I will make the eyes shiny. Might actually just go show render for now, so we get that much higher density. Um, and then, uh, are we getting a little bit of that horn in there? Maybe we can pull that back in just a little bit. Cool, all right. Uh, so that's the head done. Now I want to do the eyes, and I need to make the eyes shiny as well. So let's grab, I'll just work with these as factors as well. I think it's probably slightly more, um, it's slightly better for the performance. Let's do something like, something like that is fine. We're going zero, because like zero is the surface of the SDF. So that's, um, Nice and easy to work with it. But I think quaternion multiplication is nearly equivalent to A plus B, B plus A, A, B, where A, B, oh my god. Um, wait, so is that actually basically what we did with the, um, Oh uh, my god, my brain. 
is that that's basically what we did with the pole align node, I think, with the cross products and the dot products. I think. But we normalized instead of doing the... Um, oh, you've not got division in there, actually. Anyway, yeah. Okay, we want bloodshot around the eyes. That should be doable. Let's make a little band in here. Uh, that's like zero to uh, I'm just trying to think of how to mask this best. Um It's kind of difficult. Oh we got we can base it off the body mask actually because that'll like push up the eyes nicely. So let's do this. Uh we want I'm just gonna put that into the roughness, is that correct or is that inverted? No, that's correct. Uh, and we can grab another one of these, like this. Go this way around, and we will go something like this. We'll add some bloodshotting later as well. <laughs> and we will add some pupils. Hey, Justice. We're making, um, that's a good question. It's, a, it's got lots of legs though, so there's always that. Uh, let's flip these around. Let's go for black in the middle of the eyes there. I feel like this one should be smaller. So I am just gonna nip back into geometry nodes, come back to one of my eyes, I don't know which one. There we go. Uh, how do we do the blood shutting? So that's based on the um, body shader, right? So that's the eyes done. That's all good. Uh, we just need to We need to like mask it within the eyes, so I'm going to do it basically on this bit up here. Uh, so I need another mix RGB. Goes into here, and I need probably red to mix to somewhere around there. We can do this with like a Voronoi. Or I 2D, what? No, oh, it's because I've got all these extra nodes. Um, just a regular Voronoi. 3D and distance to edge, probably. We'll go object. So it's a little bit more like, uh, oops. That's less compressed object. It's texture coordinates, there we go. <laughs> she's got legs and she knows how to use them. Uh, let's linear light some noise in here. And it's been a long time since I've done linear lights. Some noise into the vector from the color. Get that kind of twisted look. This needs to be a lot tighter, I think. And then we can do another map range. Actually, let's just do a greater than. This is a tiny detail, so let's just do it nice and easy. And actually, let's go less than. There we go. <laughs> Beautiful. I need to, uh, it's like close, but not quite. Uh, we need the blood shotting to kind of, I, I don't know, I think I want it to fade as it gets away from the body. So I'll use this map range here and this and I can basically fade to black as it goes away, so I can multiply this by this. Let's view this. And 
and we want to go kind of the other way so let's go one to zero and we'll do something like that how are we looking <laughs> great who knew geometry nodes creatures could be so beautiful uh we gotta do something for the horns something kind of ivory-ish should be a red rim around oh like around right at the base i feel you let's grab i mean i can just do actually a second layer here uh so just before here we can grab this Oh wait, is that going to cause me... I need this to be in, like, mask to the eyes as well. Um, but we can do something like that. That then has... Oh, it's being mixed over. Hmm. Interesting. Maybe all of that should actually be mixed into there. Interesting. So then what happens with this map range? I'm just, it's basically, so when you're doing SDFs in shaders, it's basically just working out how to layer different gradients. That's all you're doing. So it's like kind of tricky, but at the same time, it's like not really anything individually difficult. It's just test it and be like, oh yeah, that actually didn't work at all. So with this one, uh, basically don't want any of the white area except from on the eyes um so where it's white if i just plug that in there does that help <laughs> no uh, if i do this does that help no oh did i do that wrong anyway yes so subtract from one that will give us the inversion of that and then this can go into the there and there we go now we've just limited this to the eyes excellent uh, now what we want to do is on this one we want to take the eyes everywhere except from on the we just want the eyes to be fixed at this point add some spiral grooves along the length like along the horns or along the legs i don't think there's much i can do to the legs uh, i don't think so anyway unless i like spiral them I mean, I totally could do that, but I don't think I, I don't think I will for this one. Um, so at this point, I feel like I've got the eyes here. Oops. And I just want to mix between these two based on the eyes. Oops, come on, join up. Oh, just on the horns yeah I've got to work out how to actually control that a bit better there we 
go. Something like that. This will give us some nice little legs. Uh, I need to isolate the horns as well. I need to give them a, a thing. Let's get some nice pink fleshy feet as well. We can make the feet nice and subsurface scattery as well. So let's grab a map range on here. Throw this up top. Right now, always looks like M uh, on the subsurface. Nice. Uh, we need this to be one and minus one, I think. Otherwise, you just end up with like loads of these really. Um, You have to go negative, basically, if you're using a gradient, it would seem, because otherwise you end up with loads of artifacts. Uh, kind of like these green areas, actually. That's the artifacts I'm talking about. Hey, go cool. Oh, fixed radius as well. Christian, Christian said that. Okay, we'll go with the random, pardon me, random walk again. Let's add a mesh, sorry, not a mesh light, an area light. I keep forgetting how big this thing is. Cool. Uh, how's this plugging in? Uh, so this is back to front for sure. Uh, Oh, so that is giving me red feet, but the feet are being obliterated by the, uh, by that. So let's do this again up into this one. Polymetric juggling. Okay, sweet. Thank you. Uh, do you have a link for that? Um, I will not leave them as red feet. I will leave them as uh, not red feet. Uh, let's make these nice and tight in here. Ah, oh, thanks, Google. That's really kind of you. I uh, I just enjoy playing with them, to be honest. I find it very satisfying to just kind of make shit. However, you, however you kind of want to push them around. Do we get Mesh Island info in here? I feel like we do, don't we? Random per island. Ooh, kinda. I'll take it. I was just thinking we can go for different colored feet, like it's stolen the feet from different people. You'll be the first guy. <laughs> it was actually really funny when I joined Unity. Loads of people knew me. Like, I was I joined a meeting and someone was like, Aaron! Like, what? Hi. It was very surreal. Like normally when I uh, have done jobs in the past, it's like, it's, well, it's just like normal, right? You just turn up and you introduce yourself and you talk to your projects. But I turned up and people were like, ah, oh, it's cool. We know what you're doing. It's like, okay. So one D noise, that's fine. Obviously we have some connections, which is why we're not getting complete randomness, but that should be fine. Uh, let's put this onto a hue saturation value node. I wish when you pulled something off, it would take the value with it. That would be super useful. Um, let's separate RGB. Oh, am I gonna map range this? Am I gonna bother? Ah, probably not. Let's just go into the factor. Um, actually, let's go into here. So maybe we start off with like a more Caucasian and then we will darken this down. Increase the saturation a little bit and increase the redness. And then we can just stick that into the factor. Let's 
we go. Cool, cool, cool. I hope that doesn't flicker. Oh, it's totally going to flicker. Well, it's only the feet. That's probably fine. Um, what are we going to do for the legs? We're we just going to make them like pinkish. <laughs> oh, it's so strange. Um, why don't I try for Ubisoft or Rockstar like a big games company? Well, I work for Unity now. They're a pretty big games company. Unity runs like, or most like 70% of games are built on Unity. Even Unreal owns more games built with Unity than built with Unreal. Which is pretty funny. Uh, I'll probably ought to do something with the horns. Ah. Uh. Uh, I kind of want to make it dance more though. Let's go from dancing. Uh, what was that song? Let me find it. Polymetric juggling. At least it's free. Can I just download this somewhere? Um, maybe SoundCloud? Props to Divkit. Let me do this on the stream so it's like kind of giving credit here. <clears throat> How come I've already got it finished in the thumbnail? Just because I wanted to make sure that I wasn't wasting people's time. Um, so I made sure that I had tried basically tried it first. Are you serious? There's no download link. God damn it. Uh, polymetric juggling. Let's just Google that again. There are like YouTube downloaders on there. Oh, free download on Hyped It. Is this like a really fishy website? I bet download websites have loads of like adult adverts on them as well. So let's keep that off stream. I'm like also double looking at this. I feel like it's making me um, think it's something it's not. Oh, I'm just going to use a YouTube downloader. This is like trying to make me sign up to stuff. Come on, nobody's got time for that. I know it's cheeky to download stuff, but this is royalty free, so... Oh, it's in YouTube Studio? Yeah, but can I download it from YouTube Studio? Uh, YouTube Studio? Wait, what am I searching for? Audio? Oh, has my internet just kicked the bucket as well? Come on. I think we're back. Uh, any step tips to stay motivated? Um, wait, are you serious? If you type Pi after YouTube? Hey, Archero, you've been just like lurking. Uh, what am I looking for? Partly electric. Polymetric juggling. Sorry, I'm not. I feel like I'm not chatting too much today. Uh, yeah, just I'm not chatting too much today. So sorry about that. I know, like some of the streams are a lot more dynamic. Oh sweet. Thanks, Archero. Uh, you can't drop links in, by the way, Gokul. Uh, Oh, just the audio. Here we go. MP3, 160k. Let's download that. <laughs> Lurking like a lurks. 
Okay, just give me a minute. This is going to take 20 seconds to download. Uh, and then we can stick it into some part of the thing, some part of the system. You know, we can actually make it make his eyes bigger as well. That's pretty fun. Um, kind of dig in the blue. Okay, I'm going to go with that for now. I know it looks a bit weird. Let's go back to geometry nodes. multiple iterations of a, a cute party hat oh my god maybe a party hat would actually be really cute on this um i mean it's just a cone right so let's just get this bobbin oh i need to turn it off from the render view yeah i was going to do the um bake sound to f curve and then put the enter like a vector in here so that i can throw it wherever i want Turn off the render. Doesn't even look that different. Oh wait, uh, just the head, right? Ooh. Jiggly. Okay, let's grab a value node. I'm going to keyframe it. I'm gonna go back to the first frame. I'm gonna bring up some is it the timeline? Is it the graph editor? It's the graph editor. Make sure you've got the right thing selected so that you can view the thing. Let's channel key bake sounds to F curves. Am I missing it? Oh, bake sounds to F curves, yeah. Just had to have it selected. Okay, bake sounds to F curves. We're going to grab a download. So many things. Oh, we've got a video of my uh, cat. I think it's this one. Oh, and I also need to add one to the video track, don't I? It's been ages since I've done this. Add sound. Oh, are you going to be able to hear it? I think so. Um, Downloads. You can hear that, right? Oh man, it's like I was trying to turn it down, but it's like not turning it down for me. Okay. <laughs> you can't hear it. Oh man, what is coming through on? It's coming through here. Wait, maybe I'll try this one. No song. It's pretty digital sounding. Ah, got it. Let me try not to flash my stream key on the stream. That would be embarrassing. Uh, audio. Just, just sing it. <laughs> um, ooh, I wonder. We're only actually streaming one stream of audio. Yeah, it's just because I haven't actually taken them on in here, uh, I think, anyway. Do I need to do something fancy in here? Turn it up. Well.
that's the one. Okay. Sweet. Let's make the timeline a little bit longer here. It's just like, is it basically the same all the way through? Oh my god, it's so long. I think it is. It's just like general jiggling, which is fine. Uh, let's throw this up onto here. I need to add some vector scaled by our music. Vector map, add. this scaled why is this not moving oh it's because i haven't scaled anything uh is that too far mm, maybe i feel like there's not a huge amount of dynamic range in this I kind of want to see what it would look like when it's rendered, because it's definitely missing some frames here. Let me uh, let me reduce my cube marching resolution as well. So we're also going to make the uh, the vector move, so we'll just jiggle it with basically pushing noise through here, like this, and I will map range the noise vector from, are we going down to the negative? It's not having fun there. Um, from 0 to 1 to He's not a very good dancer, but it's all right. What did I use the cube marching for? All of the mesh? <laughs> um, let's get into jump. Can we get off the ground? Oh, there we go. Oh my God. I love it. It's so bad. <laughs> Uh, when do you think the node system will become into a point where people will be better using Python scripting instead? Way before where I did. All of the mesh generation done with marching cubes, that should be done with Python. All of the mapping the music to it, that should be done with Python. All of the inverse kinematics, that should be done with Python. Really just this whole exercise today should have been coded. This is... Uh, I really generally don't recommend that people do as I do. I just, I enjoy messing around with the nodes. Yeah, sure you could. Um, I think so anyway. I feel like we want a just generally later section in the thing. Um, Let's give like 500 to 1500. Um, let's 
add a camera. Alt G, Alt R. Oh, thank you, Sosu. That's nice. Well, no, Archer, we have to animate it. So, um, I mean, we have to, like, make it ready for sharing with the world, you know? Are we going to be able to keep it in for the whole thing? I just want to make sure that we've got some jumps in here. I'm not going to animate every frame because that's, like, that's going to be too much. Um, I just do like a hundred frame loop. Uh, let's make this a little bit bigger. Maybe 14 the X, just so that we're not getting that uh, falling off screen. Turn off face orientation, there we go. Um, <laughs> My side job is to break, Brenda. Yeah, literally. Um, you started learning Unity. Yes. I have kind of also. I'm, I'm trying. I should definitely get on it more. It's just, I, I feel like it's actually way easier than I was expecting Unity. Like, definitely, obviously, still difficult. And like a whole creation suite with just so many nodes and tools and things. So many nodes. Just so many tools and like a totally different workflow paradigm. Loads more scripting, loads more like pushing, uh, like uh, pushing the engine to do what you need it to do. Whereas Blender's just like, make some stuff. And Unity is like, what do you want from me? So, but definitely exciting. Uh, have a play with like the cine camera stuff. Cause I feel like that will be fun for you. I think you'll enjoy that. Super controllable, like way more than Blender's camera stuff. Where's my... Let's load in our high res version, there we go. Um, I just really love how weird this thing looks. Oh, is that too far? Mm, no, it's fine. Sweet. Okay, now it's big enough. We don't get any sudden stops. I just want to. I want to do something to the camera to get it moving. Just like have a little boogie. Maybe we have a camera collection, and maybe we need to do something to. Maybe we can parent it to an. Yes. Okay. This is janky, but this will work. Oh yeah, with them. Um, yeah, I'll try and do that now. Um, so Alt G, Control S, new camera. Oh geez, uh, camera controller. And we're going to basically just set position of the vertices in here. We're going to pick this over towards the camera. We are going to take the camera, shift click on our object, select one of the vertices, control P, make vertex parent. Now when I move my plane, it moves the camera. And when I move the plane in geometry nodes, it moves the camera. And this means that we can now take a keyframe in here, insert single keyframe. I can come into here, I can select my Z channel, I can key it, Bake sound to S curves. Grabbing my music. Oh, definitely didn't mean to do that, but there we go. Okay, so key. Bake sound to S curve, F curves. And we can come in here and we can choose the highest and lowest frequency. 
Now, I believe most people's voices, like a male voice, is around about 400 hertz. I might be wrong about that. So we probably want to go for around about 500 hertz, which is hopefully going to give us a little bit of something still. Okay, well, it is doing things, but unfortunately only at... Oh, it's because I've got my high-res version of our little little guy in here. Let's go turn him down. Why is the self-portrait in MP4 format? Because it's actually... Um, I comped it together for my portfolio, so it's like the different stages of it being painted. It's not like a proper time-lapse, it's just like save number one, save number two, save number three. Uh, it's not perfect. You could do some more fun stuff in here, basically like clamping this. Eighty-five to one hundred and fifty-five hertz. You're on. Oops, delete keyframes. Set. Let's let's pull this off into a uh, combine X Y Z. We'll plug in the Z to a value. I much rather do it like in this abstracted way because then it's something that I can like clamp and play with. Uh, oh, 85 to, okay. Um, yeah, I don't know if I can like preview this in, I don't think I can. Okay, let's go to 80 to 200. Attack time, release time. I feel like the attack should be a bit longer. Um, we can also just like select this. We should just be able to scale it, right? Ooh, can we not? Oh, is this? Okay. It's extra messed up because it didn't start at the start. Let's go back to zero. Key, bake sound to S curves curves. Bake them from there. There we go. Make sure you're baking from the right place each time. Nice. Let's set this onto a multiply. This is so weird. Uh, so in the y-axis for the camera. What else do I need to do here? Are we done? Was there something else I was meaning to do? Um, I swear there was a thing that I was like, oh, I'll do that, but first let me do the music. Spikes. <laughs> we sort of have spikes. We've got the horns, uh, which, you know, I'll take that. I'll take that. It's like the vague recollection of a dream. Yeah, literally. Uh, you've got a Zoom meeting scheduled for five minutes from now. Well, do you want to take this as your, um, like your mascot? I feel like I ought to do like a little bit of um, like an actual rendered animation. It doesn't really look at the camera. I feel like maybe that could be improved, but never mind. It's just very strange. There we go. Nice. All right. Well, I'll leave you on this beautiful frame. So, thank you for everybody who stayed along for the whole ride here. Congratulations on now learning how to make inverse kinematics the potentially wrong way, but it works. Um, you can get you can get stuff to work. Uh, if you want the midway file that was when we were starting to like pretend it was like caterpillar tracks or not caterpillar tracks like centipede 
you know, like the wavy legs and doing like some more architectural things, which is kind of fun. Um, that file, as it was halfway through, is on the resources channel on Discord. Where do I have resources? Um, resources, here we go. So if you want, oh my God, I've ended up with a really long one. Uh, so if you want like the relatively simple version of these, now make the googly eyes goggle. Could make them, oh, was that what I was gonna do with the music? We were gonna, we were gonna like make it, make the eyes punch around. Oh, thanks so much for the donation. That's really kind of you. Uh, so I was just gonna take this noise texture through a map range and on the eyes which here and oh, they're both about the same size ah, nice feet thank you so much <laughs> oh, I hope you're doing good um, I can't read your name I'm sorry but you have the spell truck logo so I hope you're uh, I hope you're saying safe wherever you are uh, What do we have in here? So between zero and one, uh, it should be between like point five and one. Is that right? They were point five before. Um, we maybe go point eight, point three, something like that. Nice. Now the eyes pulse as well. Excellent. Uh, yeah, oh, I just, I love nodes. You can do so many things with them and they just get so interconnected and it's absolutely not a good use of time. But I feel like if you're playing with them now while they're in like a simple-ish state, but you can still do a lot with them, then by the time they get like incredible, which they will do in, you know, 12 months or two years, you're going to be able to do so much with geometry nodes and you're going to be so comfortable with geometry nodes by then. So there we go. Inverse kinematics and a weird, uh, a weird little guy here. Excellent. Who would have thought? <laughs> Uh, yeah, if you want this file, it's going to be on Patreon in about 20 minutes, uh, and it'll be free. I'll link it in the description, um, but it will just be like, you can just get it. You don't even need to be signed up to Patreon, I don't think. You can just click on it, and there should be a download link at the bottom, and that'll be fine. Okay, cool. Hope you've enjoyed the show, and hope you've learned something. Inverse Kinematics is cool. You can do some stuff. Uh, yeah. I'm not going to be streaming next week but I will be back in two weeks. So the 30th, I think, will be the next one. Oh, thanks for the link there, Arturo. Uh, the, yeah, 30th should be the next one. I'm having a week off, so peace. Have a good week, folks. I'll see you later. <laughs>